Simpsons Index, an online spreadsheet that is also a podcast. This is the podcast. Coming to you out of SideQuest Studios, this is the Simpsons Index, episode 169. Hello oh, out there. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. I was nice. wondering if I could breeze past that. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Not, not with us Not here. with us at all. Yeah. <laughs> now we know. And I'm your host, Elliot J. O'Neill, and joining me in the studio here, as always, except when he's not BT Calloway. Oh, hoi hoi. And joining us all the way over from the far-off distant land of Sydney City is Rose Ooh. Piper. Hello. And B. Barbascola. Hello, it's me, B. <laughs> Welcome to the f- show for the first time, B. Yeah, it's fun to be here. It's like I'm in an actual studio, but um, only if I use my imagination. <laughs> Using the imagination of Zoom, I could assume you guys are at an AFL game right now. Mm. Yeah, we're giving a press conference about all the atrocities we've committed yeah. in our careers. Ah, <laughs> oh, delightful. That's going to be a long conference. I did not shit in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> it was in the other guy's shoe. <laughs> What's really fun is the like background keeps fucking up and your you, like shirt and couch keep disappearing. She's so become a floating head for a few seconds. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's I am actually headless. This is who I am. Yeah. <laughs> He's just a head on a stick. <laughs> the daughter of the Molly Grubbs woman, I'm oh. guessing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And yeah, this is the Simpsons Index, the podcast that watches and reviews three episodes of The Simpsons at a time, but there's a twist. Each episode must come from the different from a different decade. Now, B, it's your first time on the show. We like to ask our first time guests, what's your Simpsons history? Where did the show begin with you? Simpsons history for me, I've been watching it like as long as I can remember. I think maybe my first memory of The Simpsons <laughs> is actually um, on September 11, 2001. Mm. Um, my parents <laughs> did not <laughs> let me watch The Simpsons because something important was happening and I was so angry. I was like, why won't you let me watch The Simpsons? And they're like, no, no, no. We have to watch the news tonight. And I was like, it's six o'clock. It's my time. Why aren't you letting me watch The Simpsons? So, yeah, I watched it like every every day, basically, up until like maybe two or three years ago, I watched up to like I was watching current seasons as oh, wow. they were released as well. Yeah. Wow, that's a rarity for our guests. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. tell us, because <laughs> we also asked where did the show end with you, and most people, most sensible people <laughs> say season thirteen. But what about you? Yeah, I'm. I don't know. It would have been. I, I, I don't know. Like it would have been season thirty. Yeah, it was like <laughs> thirty or something. Something crazy. Yeah, because I basically just watched every episode as it got released i was still like so dedicated to it even though i would feel nothing when i would watch those episodes i just (laughs) pushed myself through it you know Mm. i think it's called depression i'm not (laughs) sure i think that's how Um, it's pronounced yeah that's yeah. why we're doing the Simpsons Index. God. You might have a soft D. I'm not too sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yeah, it's amazing. Like, normally when we review these new episodes, I ask, Play Count, have you seen this one before? And most people, nah. The handful of no's. <laughs> yeah. Was this first one familiar to you at all? Or? Yeah, it was. I even told um, Rosie, I was like, this episode ends with Lisa ice skating in Season of the Witch plays. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And she was right. <laughs> And I was right. <laughs> <Which? of course>. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, let's get into it. We just watched season 21, episode 7, Rednecks and Broomsticks. First released in November of 2009, it was directed by Bob Anderson and Rob Oliver, written by Kevin Curran in this episode. Yeah, the Simpsons car veers off the road due to a boppet accident and the family spend the day at Cletus's house, which ends with Lisa becoming a Wiccan and Homer becoming like a moonshine Somaliere or something. <laughs> hey y'all what'd you think i mean like i didn't love it but like because <laughs> this is the second time that i've been on here and mm. the like first one that we watched last time was like utterly terrible <laughs> but like there were there were things in this that made me laugh like there was the semblance of good jokes and stuff like that like i think you can see that it's like really declining just with each year because I think this is about eight seasons prior to that one. Yeah. BT? I mean, you know when a small child hands you a drawing 
and it's like stick figures, and you know they're meant to be people. They're basic representations. You get the idea. However, it's just so barren and empty, you can have no feeling towards it as you tear it in half. <laughs> That's basically Absolutely. this episode. There's just nothing to it. I'm gonna we're gonna struggle a lot, even though I have a full page of notes. A lot of it is just stuff that happened and not any feeling about any of it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I was saying that it kind of feels like they put a bunch of Simpsons into an AI generator <laughs> and then they were like, this is kind of what an episode is. Yeah. Lisa is Wiccan now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lisa is continue. nerd and maybe gay. <laughs> yeah. There was definitely some of that in there. All right. Well, let's hook into the review proper. BT, we'll start with you. For better or worse, what's a moment that stands out to you? moment that stands out to me is this is the second time the Simpsons have had a teacher get sick with voodoo. Oh, no, sorry, black magic. Yeah. So before <laughs> it was voodoo, now it's witchcraft or wicker. I know it's not black magic. Don't at me. But the fact this is happening again and, like, magic exists in the world, effectively, of the Simpsons is just confirmed. Yeah, and this one happened before the voodoo one. So, yeah, they totally raised the stakes. This one, a witch uh, curses Miss Hoover with the Hershey squirts later mm-hmm. on in season 25. Bart will get an art teacher pregnant with the power of voodoo. Yeah. Voodoo? Yeah. You do? Do what? <laughs> Remind me of the babe. Get an art teacher pregnant with the m- memory of a babe. Yeah. <laughs> What is that from again? Labyrinth. I watched it the other day. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never even seen that. Just it that, rules. Just know that from a Daniel Kitson bit. <laughs> How about you, Rosie? What's a moment that stands out to you for better or worse? I thought the Bart getting the court reporter to read that <laughs> she had a useless job back to her. Like, that's a good joke. That's funny. Yeah. I, but, I liked that. Yeah, messing with stenographers. It's a good bit they really haven't gone to. Yeah. Yeah. Is it particularly because I used to do a similar job to that and I, you do feel quite useless at times when you're like <laughs> queuing out the captions to like Fox Sports News in the UK at 4am and thinking, <laughs> who's this for? <laughs> who's fucking watching this? You used to do teletext captions? I did. I did for nearly three years. Holy crap. Mm. <laughs> Consequently, I like get real kind of like traumatic uh, <laughs> triggering when somebody watches like TV with the captions on. <laughs> It was a really terrible, awful job. Wow. You just get flashbacks and remember all the people you lost. Oh, yeah. Well, a lot of it is people that you lost because you just have to, like, suddenly get the news that someone died and then just, like, (laughs) cue that out. Yeah, I was just cross-referencing Vietnam movies, but carry on. Yeah. (laughs) How about you, B? What stands out to you for better or worse? I really liked the moment where the fish were going blind and then they pick up a stick and then they have to find their way around the river. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> very silly. She said that was very funny about four times <laughs> while funny. that was happening. <laughs> it's actually quite funny. <laughs> it's a nice little callback to have Blinky in there as well. Yeah. Yeah, Blinky pops up every now and then. Yeah, and as a bastard of evolution, and picking up a stick, showing that he can evolve too. <sighs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. And God, what stands out to me? Um What does stand out to you, Elliot? I don't know. This episode is such a wash. Y'all took all the good bits. Howie. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I guess I'm gonna say a yeah, Homer being a moonshine Somalia was very odd, but mm. As a plot point, I don't know, it just didn't feel like much happened. No, as an idea, I was for it, but then they did nothing with it. Yeah. yeah. And they, except this little tie into the uh, other plot. B literally yeah. said that. She was just like this. It's nothing. Like, yeah, it's nothing. It's so boring, the B plot. Like, they incorporate like a montage reference to Sideways in there. Mm. Yeah. And, oh, is that that's what, that's what that was? it was. I right. haven't seen Sideways. Yeah, neither have I. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Apparently it's great. I wouldn't Hold say you, it's Marty. great. It's um, it's a movie. It's indie great. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's one of those ones that got a lot of clout, and I don't really know why. Wait, like, do you mean bad. 500 Days of Summer great or Garden State great? <laughs> yeah, okay. I think Garden State great, yeah. Oh, oh so right. bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the answer to both of those is bad. <laughs> <laughs> I could yeah. still watch 500 Days of Summer, though. I couldn't watch Garden State. I love the Smiths. And I love the Brath Man. <laughs> <laughs> and Peter Sarsgaard. <laughs> mm. But sideways, that was uh, fucking Ned from Ned and Stacy and Paul Giamatti. Yep. I, I don't mind a bit of uh, Thomas Hayden Church. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Uh, weird fact about sideways, because he rips on Merlot in it, Merlot sales then dropped. The irony part being at the very end, he's meant to drink a French wine that is a Merlot. Oh, so right. wine drinkers are fucking morons who don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, it's all pretentiousness. <laughs> yep. 
That was one of my favorite things. I, I worked in a bottle shop for nearly six years and it, it was just the confidence, but then just a stumble at the end that mm -hmm. like made me laugh so much was this guy came in. He was like, hey, I, uh, I'm looking for male lot. <laughs> like, oh, oh, dude. He got so close. <laughs> Fuck, how did he go pronouncing cab sav? Jesus. <laughs> yeah. yeah, cabinet sovignon. <laughs> Dev gong. Yeah, about the like um Homer moonshine thing, I feel like the whole plot line was they were like let's think of the witch plot line with Lisa and then we have to find an explanation for it. So let's just make Homer make moonshine and that's why it ends up in the water. Yeah. Like it seems yeah. like it was like... It was really clumsily reverse yeah. engineered. Yeah. Well, even the way it started, like Lisa's Wiccan storyline starting from the family essentially having a day at Cletus's house. Mm. Yeah, I don't know why one of the Goths weren't like part of Cletus's family just to make that a little neater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's so true. It would have made it so much like it, it just feels so in, like a happenstance kind mm. of thing. It's like, mm. yeah, just very strange. And did any of you pick up the guest voice spot of one of the Goths? No. All three were Meryl Streep. Nope. Uh, one of them, the tall pink-haired one, was Neve Campbell. Nev Campbell? Neve yeah, Campbell. Right. What? I can't believe I didn't pick up on that. I watched Scream last night. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. <laughs> and presumably the craft a lot when you were <laughs> Maybe. I was about to say, I figure there is no question at all that one of the writing staff saw the craft the, lot the previous night and they're like, let's just yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What if we just make the Simpsons episode this? <laughs> <laughs> but but that's when it's better is when they do the like full on parodies like Cape yeah. Fear or something like that. I kind of hope they'd lean in harder into it, but they just didn't. So, but yeah, yeah. Mm. too much moonshine. Yeah, they started out with like a neat little craft parody and turned it into a Salem witch trial, which I thought was just kind of a boring, predictable, and dumb move. Yeah, yeah. And I which also they've also kind of done in a Halloween episode too. Yeah, yeah. and I yeah. also felt that Lisa running in, being like, "I've realized what happened," was just like, "How mm. did you come across yeah. this? Like, how did you realize that?" It was just like it felt like a you know Deus Ex Machina moment of just being like, "Oh, the, the, and this is how we found out <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> what everything mo happened." <laughs> moonshine joke, Deus Ex 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 Machina. Nice. Oh, oh good. good. Very good. Stuff. Thank you. Uh, who said Funny. our brains aren't firing during quarantine? <laughs> <laughs> now, the other thing that kind of bugged me about that is Lisa's whole bit is, oh, the moonshine went into the river and then people drank the water and that's why they went blind. It's like, well, Homer drank moonshine directly and it yeah. didn't affect yeah. him or any of the other hillbillies. Was that, but he's uh, an alcoholic. Yeah, I think that's probably <laughs> yeah. supposed to be the thing. Hibbert, like, isn't? He's a freak of nature. Yeah, as a D&D &D dungeon master, you'd know about yeah beings with high constitution. Um, yeah, yeah, I might have rolled successfully on the... Fine, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> so, play count. Have you seen this episode before, BT? No. Rose? No. B? Yeah. Yay. <laughs> um, <laughs> how many times do you reckon? Uh, probably just once. Like, I think when I did, uh, like, when I was watching The Simpsons as it came out, I just never revisited. Mm. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's like, why? Why would you? <laughs> yeah, this was not a labor of joy. <laughs> yeah. No, it's kind of the good thing about doing this podcast is, like, I can just register my thoughts on an episode and just move on from it. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. never think about it again. Yeah. So was this a particularly wacky episode of The Simpsons? It, it was a little bit. Yeah, some of the, just the jokes in passing, like a bunch of snow falls on top of Homer and kind of casts him exactly in snow, and then a grenade lands at his feet. Yeah. And uh, he dies? Yeah, I don't know. That is actually something that I liked with the, like, the bowling with grenades and snowmen. <laughs> like, that looks fucking sick. <laughs> I would love to do that. Hey, no, much simply, there's a bunch of bits in passing that did work, but uh, just for the wackiness, uh, Mo really wants to be raped by hillbillies. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's happened now. So uh, um, that's something. Also, well, it's like he's got a death wish. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's suicidal. Um, that's part of his character. Yeah. Uh, one of the most relatable characters in The Simpsons. <laughs> 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 no, but um, like Chief Wiggum pulls a gun on himself when the fly lands on yeah. his nose. Yeah, I think it's implied that he's about to shoot himself <laughs> in the face. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's annoying because they did that joke before as well with the uh, donuts in The Simpsons movie. Like. Mm. He goes to eat a donut off his gun and almost shoot. Yeah, anyway. Well, they've done oh, other yeah, ones yeah. with right. that, like uh, when he's, you know, I think cleaning out his ears with the barrel of his gun and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. it's not so directly, like, cuts away, he's probably dead now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the third he's probably dead now is, yeah, the dunking of Homer afterwards, which sucked because I kind of like that as, like, he's just enjoying getting uh, dunked into moonshine water. But it just held for so long. Like, he gets dunked into water, pulls up, the chair's empty, and the hillbillies all walk away for, like, 30 seconds going, huh, huh. 
Mm. That's what I feel that is weird about these later episodes, right? Is the pacing is so fucked, right? Yeah. Because like yeah. the boppet joke that's at the very start of yeah. this episode goes on for way too long. Not only does it go on too long, but it also kind of like shifts into like back to Winnipeg joke again a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Like, yeah, we get it. It's an annoying toy. You could have, yeah, done that joke in literally half the time. I do appreciate yeah. that, you know, Homie gets frustrated, throws it out the window, and then the guy in the car next to him also has the same problem, throws it into their window. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Right. And the batteries as well, how Marge is like, yeah. oh, no, the batteries. It's like, it's funny, but it's like they could just make it so much tighter. But I feel like, because I maybe see what they're trying to do, because, like, the Sideshow Bob with the rakes is, like, yeah. such an iconic, like, the joke yeah. goes too long. <laughs> but it just, it doesn't work in the same way yeah well i mean especially because hey you know this annoying toy let's spend yeah over like yeah, two minutes so fucking much time thing. on it mm. but yeah. having said that i am the uh number one bop it champion in my family i got Ooh. a score of <laughs> 100 and i am undefeated how in my family how big is your family though that's the question <laughs> that's the, how many people are we counting uh seven he lives in a cletus esque uh, <laughs> yeah. family where there's like 18 children <laughs> wendy Brittany. Yeah. <laughs> Hubert. What about the emotional core? Was this a particularly heartfelt episode of The Simpsons? Uh, no, not at all. I, they kind of try to drive it at one point when Lisa's like, oh, but these girls accepted me and I felt cool for once. It's like, you met them twice. Yeah. And yeah. I like the other episode, like when they go to the beachside resort yeah. to look oh, up yeah, Ned's yeah. house. And you get a sense they spent the entire day together and had a good time. This, they literally just meet up. She's like, oh, you're Wiccans? That's Nate. I'll go home and do my homework. Oh, hey, and I'm Wiccan now. Yeah, and also the witches aren't really, like, there's nothing about them that makes them seem like they're actually accepting her into this place. They're just like, oh, we're witches, come join us. And then she's like, okay, and, like, yeah. that's it. It's not like, yeah. oh, they actually saw Lisa for a genuine person, which is what the Seaside episode does. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. And there is a point to be made, you know, like, yeah, people rushing to judge people that, um, yeah, are wearing gothy clothing or whatever. And But, yeah, they just don't, like drive any point home it's yeah. just yeah they turn it into this ridiculous fucking salem witch trial and, thing. and that's the thing it was mm. there like the idea of lisa having a group of friends and getting into something new and all that kind of stuff it's all entirely there and it's just mm. they, they think they've got it but they don't yeah yeah and i mean homer loves booze i guess mm -hmm. oh that he he'd does. be drinking yep. him no <laughs> <laughs> fuck this is the least we're spent on an emotional part of the uh an episode but i guess ultimately did it feel like an episode of the simpsons are the characters behaving like themselves are these are characters you know and love uh like it did and it didn't like lisa struggling with any kind of schoolwork i was about to say yeah felt that's super out of character yeah yeah and it felt so like inconsequential of like it wasn't like the night before she was worried too much about schoolwork. Like if she yeah. were to not do a project or whatever, it would be like a huge kind of thing. Like it would almost be a whole episode. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it wouldn't just be like, okay, cool. I'll join these witches and then not do my project. Yeah. yeah. Also conversely, Bart is actually kind of a bit clever in this episode. Yeah. yeah true. Which he's like normally like just kind of mini Homer a little bit. No, yeah. he's smart. <laughs> but, uh, like Bart the is whole cool. well, he, he did play himself with the whipped cream and the saxophone. That one came back and splattered him on the face. As it often, yeah, is. that's true. But uh, just even if they'd laid a bit more foundation for Lisa missing this project, like maybe she's trying to do it in the car, but it's too bumpy, or she has a line yeah. about, "Oh, we've got to get home. I have to, a project you tomorrow," something like that. Yeah, like Homer stopped her from doing it yeah. with some. But like the only reference we get to it is her going, oh, can I get out of this, please? It's like, but why? You love schoolwork. Yeah. 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 It's a fucking you would have had this so done so like a week in advance. Yeah, yeah. and it's such a throwaway line. It's kind of just like, oh, okay, here's some exposition so the next thing can happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's it. It's like basic storytelling. <laughs> yeah, although what I did love is um, the witchcraft! Witchcraft! <laughs> oh, really? Oh, that was I a thought that was funny, dude. <laughs> that was such a sea of groans in. <laughs> in I <our> loved it. <laughs> I, I groaned at the hand slap sticking together because that was just really telegraphed. Yeah. Mm. Oh, actually, one pun that yeah may have yeah, made everyone else groan. I did like Wikipedia. I mean, it's I, I didn't mind pun, that. But it was yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact they didn't grind to a halt and stare at it and point and go, do you get it? 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ned kind of did, but again, uh, uh, it yeah. was yeah, it was mostly fine. And yeah, of course, he gets involved in this story because I I did like the assertion that Buddhism leads to uh, witchcraft. Yeah, I was thinking <laughs> that too. <laughs> Uh, yeah, get that printed on a um, Facebook group page. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I guess like character, there was like there were a few little breaks. But yeah, the show as a whole, like I don't I, think felt like The Simpsons. Yeah, it just it was too shallow. There was no complexity or depth. Again, it's stick figures. I understand they look like The Simpsons, but it's just not there. Yeah, yeah. B mentioned this at the start as well, which I think I said in the last episode is like it has none of that atmos and like music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that, that's a great big sticking point for you, Beach, oh, as absolutely. well. And like, yeah. It's silent. Yeah, just yeah. like when they're in the car, like, yeah. there's it's normally like, the sound of a car. But it's yeah, it's completely hollow. Yeah. yeah. Right. Especially because it starts off with them complaining about traffic, and then the traffic immediately disappears. But there's no honking or anything or engine. Or... Yeah. 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 Oh, it's crazy the lack of sound design on these shows. Mm -hmm. But yes or no, would you watch this episode again? Nah. I, I wouldn't actively put it on, but I wouldn't be like upset yeah. if someone did, I guess. Yeah, there are a couple of jokes I do like in this episode, despite the fact that everything I've said so far. But it's mm. it's absolutely a laundry episode. I you do something else while this was on. Oh yeah, I'm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Despite the handful of jokes, no, I don't see a reason to go back to this no, one. There's nothing new to pull from it. Yeah, I I was pleasantly surprised though, with like how much better this was than the first episode last time I was on this podcast. Like, that's probably the worst episode of The Simpsons I've ever seen. Oh, there's worse. That was which a, one was that? Um. One that ended with the fucking Deus Ex parody. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, there's mm. worse. I don't know. Right. Oh, I guess it was. It's like 29 or something like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I have. Yeah, Homer breaks ultra woke robots by uh, doing bot face. Mm. Oh, mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like how, like, none of those words feel like they go together. And yeah. yet. <laughs> The, the it's a computer. It's a supercomputer yeah. that are writing these well, terrible episodes. I mean, <laughs> supercomputer might be a stretch. Amiga 64, yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a thousand typing monkeys will, yep. yeah. One day. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Simpsons will <laughs> accidentally. <Appreciate. laughs> Simpsons accidentally go, fuck, we wrote Hamlet. Um, it was a blurst of time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, BT, we'll start with you. What would you like to change about this episode? Give it a point. Mm. So if you're going to parody the craft, parody the craft. Maybe she starts to get, Lisa starts to get friendly to these people, finds out maybe they are pulling a bit of dark magic on the side, isn't cool with that, wants to get out of it. Do anything else. You can pretty much drop the Homer subplot because that does nothing and just focus on Lisa. Give us a solid Lisa story. We haven't done that for a very long time. And there's something to be said about either go the happy route of her getting accepted, but in this kind of you know way that maybe she's not comfortable with eventually or maybe go the darker route where yeah she's not they're actually pulling some black magic stuff and she's yeah. not happy with that because it conflicts with her buddhism i don't know something like they have nature in common but then they can branch out from that so that or anything else how about you b what would you like to change about this episode i agree with bt i think it's like you just need to make it 100% Lisa-centric because it's such a kind of, like, obvious step to make Lisa a witch, right? It's like yeah. she's intelligent, she's an outcast, blah, 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 blah. And, like, it takes so long for her to actually come across the witches. So, like, put that in, like, the fucking first scene, speed it up, kind of who cares about Homer, who cares about anything else, and also make the witches cool. they just like Rosie was saying, I think we've all seen these girls at the pub in the inner west. Like, make them a bit more edgy, you know? 50% mm. <laughs> more Newtown. Yeah, no, true, yeah. yeah. Like, their only function is to be there. Yeah. And they have no personality. <laughs> no, it's yeah. why the Nev Campbell, uh, is it Nev or Neve? Who knows? Neve. Neve? I, I would have always said Nev. Mm. I, I thought it was Neve Campbell. I don't know. Well, anyway, yeah, the cameo, like, just completely washes by because, yeah, the characters have no personality. and Yeah. 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 How about you, Rose? What would you like to change? Um, more moonshine. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, same as BT and B. Like, yeah, mm. make it Lisa-centric. Like, do, like, a straight-up parody of The Craft. I think they always do the parodies really well. Even if they're rehashing storylines, like, make it kind of like Lisa the Vegetarian, where it's like, oh, she's exploring these beliefs, and people are like, mm. oh, that's not cool, but then it turns out it is cool. Yeah, you could play with uh, the Ned Flanders thing a bit more about yeah, Ned, sure. like, sticking his beak into it and stuff like that. Yeah, like, I, legit, I have a friend who, like, has, like, gotten quite into, like, the religion of Satanism. 
Oh, cool. And went on a date recently where like a guy was really freaked out by that. But she's like, it's actually like a really good kind of well-meaning thing. Yeah. Like <laughs> that storyline would be good for people like that. Yeah. Like I really like the idea of challenging like Lisa's skepticism with all this sort of stuff and sort of seeing beyond that surface level and, you know, ooh, spookiness about it. And, you know, Lisa's flirted with being a goth before, wasn't yeah. one of her personalities, <laughs> Raven Never Smiles? That's the one. Mm. Yeah. And we know from, yeah. like, montages, she has a goth phase at one point. Yeah. We also know from montages at yep. one point, despite Marge's wishes, Lisa does end up with a woman, and later on, in a polyamorous relationship with two women. And then settles for Millhouse. Is this true? Because I said that there there was, like, a little yeah. hint that maybe she was gay in but this. But then also maybe we were projecting. That's true. <laughs> we're two queer women. It was done in like a. They do like a jump forward episode in like season twenty three or something, and mm-hmm. they do like a I've montage of the yeah. photos over the years, and uh, and yeah, she ends up uh, with Millhouse anyway. So yeah, yeah. should we consider That's this terrible. canon? Yeah, mm-hmm. probably not. <laughs> Oh, yeah, what I'd change. Lean into the sideways thing. If you're going to fucking do it, do it. Homer yeah. and Cletus on a moonshining uh, travel show. That you could know. be delightful. Yeah. yeah. Two yeah. separate episodes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. We often say that, yeah. Fucking. <laughs> now, I, th- I think you may have nailed this entire episode on the head on. If you're going to do it, just fucking do it. Yeah. Don't, like, quarter-ass it. Definitely. Yeah. All right, now it's time for everyone's final notes. Oh, I forgot about this. Hang on, I got a thing. Oh, you got a thing? I had a thing, but I meant to improve the thing. Sorry, here's my soundboard. Okay. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's see if I can get through it. I probably can't because I haven't rehearsed it. <clears throat> and so the end is near. And so we give our final notions. These notes we all write down but couldn't say in the commotion. We give our final thoughts. And for the record, but not on vinyl, but more, so much more than this, these notes are final. <laughs> clap, clap, clap. Yeah, clap, 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 clap. First um, take, we're I'm holding happy. our mics, we can't clap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's oh, it. Oh, what we're a treat. Some... We didn't get that in my uh, last episode. Well, he's changed it from uh, Elliot's final notes to everyone's final notes. Oh, um, we didn't have you in, that was yeah. one of the heroes always, except when he's not episodes. Well, except when I'm not. Ah. Uh, Where would I be without my soundboard? (laughs) Um, Without sound, obviously. B, what's your final notes? Why did Lisa just ice skate at the end? Did Mm. they just want to put the Season of the Witch song in? Like, is there any actual thing that 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 pretty shoehorned, didn't it? Yeah, it's just like, why? I'm actually guessing they became uh, friends with Donovan around this time because we (laughs) did an episode recently from around this time that uh, had Jennifer, Juniper, that Donovan song. Yeah. Right, so maybe it was like, yeah, one of those things where it's like a weird kind of contract or something where it's like, play five songs within the season. Well, now, yeah. now we have the rights to it, let's just do it because. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, he was also in Future Armor as well, yeah. How about you, Rose? Any other notes? I just think more than I usually have with like later episodes, I was like noticing how much like the voice actors' voices are changing. mm mm-hmm. Like Julie Kavner with like Patty and Selma and like even like Cletus doesn't sound quite how he used to and stuff like that. Kind of yeah. takes me out of it a bit. No, like Marge can, like some episodes can make you weep. Yeah. Poor <laughs> Julie Kavner. <laughs> poor rich yeah, I Julie just, Kavner. Uh, the poor, like, it sounds like she's forever got like rocks stuck in her throat. Like even just when she's speaking regularly. Mm-hmm. Feel sorry for her. Forever living with a sore throat. Well, no, the old joke on this podcast is, yeah, she's done more death growls than most death metal vocalists. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> last 30 years, she's been like, homie, I do not approve. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> How about you, BT? Any other notes? I got a bunch. I did quite like the, um, you know, the, they're serving the Simpsons soup after they fall into the lake and it's like, oh, it's possum. Oh, don't worry. We just dip the possum. Mm. And they're just dipping possums in. I got a chuckle. <laughs> Uh, they refer to moonshine as whoopee water. Yep. I also like that. I actually <laughs> liked them referring to grenades as boom potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I did. I didn't like that. No. Nah? <laughs> <laughs> I just felt it felt so lazy. Uh, actually, oh, the lazy one for me was the the two hillbilly kids counting. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they're just like. Although I kind of like they describe the numbers instead of like know their names. Oh, I thought they were just saying random food. No, oh, wasn't one like one legged H for four. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh, okay. I think. Oh, I wasn't paying that much attention. Jeez. Um, <laughs> I do like when Lisa first meets the Wiccans and she's like, oh, are you guys a minority group for the purposes of college applications? Like Cornell and Dartmouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then she's like, what else you got? <laughs> yeah. 
Ned has the nipple slip hotline on his phone. Yeah, I yeah. noticed that too. <laughs> yeah. uh, and my last note was actually quite a positive one where I don't remember the reference, but they talk about some kind of rich goat and it just cuts to a goat on a yacht surrounded mm. by women. Uh, like, yeah, okay. yeah, immediately that was just like family guy. It was very much <laughs> that, but I do just the picture of a rich goat is just funny to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If I were a rich goat. (laughs) 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 That's a baby (laughs) ox. And my final note is Lisa is weakened now because that wasn't recent. Nope. And my notes are, yeah, the Patty and Selma, Kent Brockman, witch thing. I hated all of that. But yeah, now we know that amongst Selma's many conquests, Kent Brockman was one of them. Mm. Mm. I mean, he's pretty easy. I, li- I actually <laughs> liked that Gwen Nightshadow's real name was Stacy Death Satan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. S- Simpsons could name goths well, actually. Yeah. Because mm. they were, all the writers probably were goths at a point in time. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's time to rank this mm. thing. On the Simpsons Index, we rank using our six-point scale, which starts down the bottom at failure. Maybe if the episode was just meh, you give a participant. But for the positive rankings, you got okay bronze, good silver, excellent gold, but for the best, of the very best, the episodes which the Simpsons could not exist without, you give Cubic Zirconia. I'm going to go first, let me show you how it's done. I'm going to give it a participant. Like This episode was just such a wash, and despite the fact that I could go bronze, because I liked a handful of jokes, I just I really don't want to watch it again. PT. Yeah, pretty much going to echo that exactly. Uh, participant, it's got an idea, and that's good, and a few jokes I liked, but there is just so little effort that needs so many more passes of the script. Participant, it is pretty much the definition of a participant for me. Rosie. I, like... I listened back to my last episode and wished that I had said failure for that episode uh, <laughs> because this feels because I want to give this participant, but mm-hmm. it feels so much better than the one that I also <laughs> gave that. But yeah, I'll, I'll I'll give it a participant. And B, finish it off. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a participant, a hundred percent. Just because, as well, I can't look past like all of the good things that they could have done that were mm. like easy, small changes that would have probably gotten it into bronze. Yeah, those always hurt much, much more. Oh yeah, the, <laughs> the potential is so annoying. Yeah, as Linus <laughs> says, there's no greater tragedy than a lost potential. Deep. Mm. Mm. Linus is a deep dude. <laughs> All right, well, unanimous participant. This will be the third episode from season 21 to be given that ranking. It'll be joining Oh Brother, Where Bart Thou, where Bart... Uh, Is that the one where he meets his twin? No, he adopts a uh, a kid from a foster home. It's like a, almost the peppy episode, except uh, Bart's the one yeah. who adopts the kid to have a little brother. That's stupid. Yeah, and also Thursdays with Abe, where some journalist like writes a story about Abe Simpson's life and then tries to kill him. I know what? I've seen that, and what? yet I cannot recall a single thing, except something about a train, I think. Yeah. 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 Is that yeah. Sub- <laughs> uh, like a parody of something? Most of them are, and they're, again, 32 seasons in, they're just at the point where they're parodying the most obscure shit. <laughs> right. All right, well, yeah, look, that about does it for the HD era episode. Now we're going to the teens era, where we're watching The Wandering Juvie. Does anyone know this episode based on title alone? Not no, not by on title. title. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's a futuristic juvenile detention hall that it, where prisoners are held in place with magnets and it walks around so it wanders. You can never find it, so you can't plan a heist. But they plan a heist. Magnets, always about the magnets. Yes. <laughs> and heists. <laughs> All right, we're going to go watch that and we'll be back. Cool. Oop. You didn't say I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> And we are back, and we just watched our Teens Era episode. This was Season 15, Episode 16, The Wandering Juvie. First released in March of Ought 4, it was directed by Laura McMullen, written by John Frink and Don Payne. In this episode, Bart pulls a wedding registry gift prank, which leads him into Juvenile Hall. And then he meets another inmate over at the girls' juvie, Gina Vendetti, and she escapes from prison with him handcuffed to her. Hey, what would you think? I, I actually liked this. I was pleasantly surprised. I've seen this episode a lot of times. Yeah? But it was still good. And I could kind of like, uh, comparing it to the last episode that we watched, it kind of did sort of feel closer to what you would call a classic episode. Like, I liked how we stuck with Bart the whole time. The mm. gags were pretty funny. Like, I found we were laughing like, more than last... Well, we didn't laugh in the first yeah, one at all. Really, yeah. 
But we would, yeah, there were definitely some real standout lines and stuff and things that I remember from that mm. episode. Like, I couldn't believe how different this felt to the last one because, like, I know it's six seasons apart, but it's also, like, mm. only six seasons apart. Yeah. You know? Right? Like, mm. how quickly it changed. It's very bizarre. But, like, there was an interesting point that kind of goes off the back of... um what Rose was talking about, like the kind of atmosphere and the sound of the Simpsons changing. She like was like, oh, in the courtroom, you can hear footsteps, like footsteps Mm -hmm. are put in and like, Mm. yeah. You don't know what you got till it's gone. exactly. (laughs) No, you're right. And there's transitional music, uh, all the strings and stuff feeding the mood. Yeah. 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 And it also just feels like way tighter. Like it doesn't feel like there is any moment that's kind of like lingering mm. sort of thing. It feels way tighter than the last episode. Yeah. Man, this is going to be, when we get down to ranking this one, it's going to be tough, mostly because I think this episode got better as it went on. The first mm. opening is eh, but once you kind of get to Juvie, it gets a lot better. And then it's got some pretty good lines as we go on. So this is going to get interesting. Yeah, I totally agree. And like, yeah, the reason for Bart going to Juvie, but I think that's for the what would you change question. But mm. yeah, let's get into the review proper. So yeah, we'll start with you, BT. For better or worse, what's a moment that stands out to you? Uh, my brain don't work so good ever since I drank my thermometer, but sometimes I whittle what got goes past. <laughs> oh yeah, sometimes I whittles the future. Yes. <laughs> and I, I am uh, like 10% hillbilly, so I'm allowed to do that. Yes, your family from uh, North Carolina. North Carolina, Hudson. <laughs> just, just on that, I like I have actually technically kind of drank a thermometer. Oh, what? What? While we're sharing <laughs> stories, I was a little bit sick when I was younger. I think I, I can't remember how old, old old I was. I was probably like nine or ten or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I had a thermometer in my mouth, and I sneezed, and I bit down oh, on shit. it. <gasps> so like, I had like mercury inside me. I, I would have oh, had like mild shit. mercury poisoning. I've got like a an X ray somewhere at home. We just like you can see like dots of mercury like all through my like chest and abdomen and stuff. Wow. That is horrifying. Do you yeah. riddles the future? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, go, it goes some ways to explaining, you know, me eventually, I think. <laughs> That'd be like my mom when I came out as trans. She'd be like, oh, I knew if something went wrong with that thermometer back when. <laughs> the boy ain't never been the same since. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, this is how you use your Cletus, you know, just yeah. quick drive by moments. You know, you don't hinge a story point on him. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've, I've never remember there being like more than just like a few throwaway gags. Yeah. yeah. And most importantly, none of those gags are about meth or incest. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, how about you, B? What stands out to you for better or worse? I really liked, I think we both really liked the scene where they're like, seal the perimeter. And then, yeah. like, the old man comes and Just then a long he, yeah. pole trying to pull the window yeah. shut. And he's like, do you want me to close it quickly or <laughs> do you want me to close it right? Yeah. yeah. Like, that more than anything felt like the simpsons that really felt like a joke that they would do i i liked that a lot i love it when they do drawn out gags you know in the heat of Mm. these moments these tense moments and yeah here's the very proud hook door guy who's like (laughs) (laughs) Mm. and just like when people give attitude when they don't really like have (laughs) the kind of authority to do so i like Mm. i love that kind of stuff oh it's yeah, it's the backseat driver. It's like, oh, do you want to get there fast or alive? You know, yeah. it's yeah. Arnie yeah. Pie yeah. giving shit to Kent Brockman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And how about you, Rose? What stands out to you for better or worse? Um, B took mine. Sorry. Um, so, <laughs> so I thought that this closed on a good joke. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think a lot of these newer episodes, I don't feel like they do. But like, yeah, I liked that joke. Just what if I've the- got an evening planned because you do really like that because that also felt like The Simpsons. I think like yeah, the the, the unexpected like yeah, the reversal. Yeah, yeah, yeah a, a quiet night with a tuna sandwich and watching Will and Grace while I cry myself to sleep. Yeah, COVID yeah. plans and go for the whole yeah. uh, hard moment of well, why don't you join us? And yeah, then- yeah, and then he's <laughs> like, <it>. no, <laughs> yeah, so good. I love the rejection of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, playing the warden as well as guest star Charles Napier, who... Oh, I know that name. He's been on The Simpsons a bunch of times, but yeah, as a warden type. And if you mm-hmm. look up Charles Napier, he's like, oh yeah, that's a security type. Yeah, character actor. Yeah, I remember this character, but I can't remember from like what episode or what yeah. role or whatever. He's done a very similar character in a bunch of episodes, and I swear there's this episode... In this season where Homer, like, fights a bear and then makes friends with the bear. Oh, yeah. Mm, right. Yeah. 
and Charles Napier plays a, a hunter. bear hunter. Yeah, they're practically drawn mm. the same. Shoots an eagle out of the sky and eats it on a sandwich. Yeah. I think that's kind of a, a mark of that era of The Simpsons is like all those kind of like external characters who just have whatever job is necessary mm. for them to have for that episode, like the rich Texan or Lindsay Nagel yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Gil. Well, it's another weird thing about like new HD Simpsons is they don't actually like go to the effort of introducing new characters. It's sort of whatever guest star they've got that week. But yeah, the, well, that's what I was saying to B during that one is like the use of the like non-family characters feels mm. yeah. like natural. Yeah, natural and like there, how they got more the yes it. guy as well. Yeah. Oh yes. To do the old, uh, this is not a um, outhouse <laughs> joke. Yeah, which yeah. I loved. I always love yeah, that kind of great. joke. <laughs> you like the idea of Homer just taking a dump in a dressing room? Yeah, yeah. But not even Homer. Like anyone. I was just saying before. Like Tahi used to have a great joke where he said a great prank to play is to go into one, wait for someone to go in the change room next to you, and go, "Oh, there's no toilet paper in here." <laughs> <laughs> it just that's always funny to me. That is pretty good. Very good bit. <laughs> but yeah, just on the recurring characters, because around the teens era is when they introduced Judge Constance Harm, mm-hmm. played mm. by Malcolm in the Middle's Jane Cax Merrick. Mm. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was missing um, Judge Schneider. Yeah, it's weird how they sort of replaced him in that episode, yeah. Well, anything like drastic, they always well, get Constance Harm in. Yeah, yeah they- because they had to have like a harsh judgment mm. um, oh, yeah. kind of oh, yeah. put. Yeah, they used to I mean? do that, right? Like they had different like doctors and different... Yeah. Lawyers, different judges and Depend stuff for different verdicts and everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. They usually, yeah, have a competent and an incompetent version. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> with Lionel Hutz and Blue Haired Lawyer or Dr. Hibbert and Dr. Nick. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the other guest star, who knows who was playing Gina Vendetti? Meryl I Street. guess it was Linda Cardellini. Oh, yeah. Because it, it sounds a lot like her, but I could be wrong. Want to have a, t- a stab at it, Rose? My original guess was Lindsay Lohan, but then. B said Linda Cardellini, and I couldn't not hear that. Mm. I know it's definitely not Lindsay Lohan, but <laughs> I'm guessing maybe we got Linda Cardellini wrong. Yeah. Nope, it was Sarah Michelle Geller. Oh, oh. They have very similar voices. <laughs> oh, that makes sense yeah. now. I also have been watching Freaks and Geeks and Buffy recently, oh. so maybe it's <laughs> just yeah, been just, like m- just mixing up melding the two. it yeah. together. Interesting fact, she's actually known as the poor man's Meryl Streep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to I'll, I'll be sure to update her Wikipedia to oh, reflect that. Don't back. worry, it's on there. Meryl Streep as that character it would like, be cool. <laughs> no, Meryl but, Streep. Do you know where like, Meryl Streep Slayer. plays like Bart's girlfriend or whatever? Like, yeah, that, yeah. I, I will never understand how that yeah. voice is coming from. I her. really want footage of it. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Well, she wasn't young at the time, and she totally affected a voice that was a convincing ten-year-old. Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah, like it, like Dan Castellaneta's speaking voice doesn't sound like Homer, but that makes more sense to me than like that mm. Meryl Streep voice. Yep. Yeah, it's so weird when yeah you have the image of Homer and then you see Dan Castellaneta as basically this bald twig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's wild. Play count. Have you seen this episode before today? I don't think I have. I've seen it multiple times, probably, like, at least five times. Yeah, BT? Pretty sure I've seen it before, but I might have just whittled the future. (laughs) You just whittled (laughs) this entire episode? Maybe. Back when you were in North Carolina? (laughs) I can't remember everything I'd gone done. You just remember stories from your own personal life when you were in juvie? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I've seen this episode a bunch. I have a weird affection for season 15. I know Mm. it's not the best, but, like, it's a very hit-and-miss season, and... Mm. That's good. But was it a particularly wacky episode of The Simpsons? Oh my, yes. Yeah, I felt like there was a fair bit of good wacky shit in here. Mm. Mm. There was a real good example that I thought of during the episode that has absolutely vacated my brain immediately (laughs) under pressure. There was dun, all, dun, like, dun, the, there's dun, a wacky dun. moment. Of- oh, I, I, this is what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Uh, um, <laughs> the ending of uh, the Itchy and Scratchy, the edited mm. Itchy and Scratchy. Yep. Mm. That felt like old Simpsons with just like some fucking random Cossack dancing. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I love how they, yeah, they build it up as yeah, this big fucking war scene and then just. <laughs> uh, yeah. Edited for mm. prisons. Yeah. You were going to say one, B? Oh, yeah. I think of the one that BT's favorite moment about whittling the future is how they have that little <laughs> cutaway where um, Chief Wiggum is b- getting uh, attacked by the bear as well, which yep. was one of the wooden little carvings. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And they've got the bear in shackles later on. Yeah, it's a very yeah. Good <laughs> yeah. It's fun. And also mm-hmm. there's like all that stuff of like 
at the start of the episode, Marge and her like um, face oh, yeah. cream getting, mm. you know, murdered or whatever. <laughs> Skin mites love to eat beauty. Yeah. 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 Oh, I reckon her... you could really sell some shit with an ad like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think they have. <laughs> mm. There are literal monsters hiding in your paws. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I used to work at a um, beauty place and that's what we told them. <laughs> so face masks And I was employee of the month <laughs> You oh. definitely wouldn't struggle to tell people That they've got monsters in their face <laughs> I'm a good liar What can I say Did you know your skin is haunted <laughs> <laughs> Oh awesome uh, BT Oh yeah loads Come on You got uh, police chief Wiggums The badge says cash bribes only mm-hmm. Yeah um, I do like There's a few wacky bits In the prison Where especially when one guy's like Pumping iron By lifting nerds By their d- underwear Yeah And yeah The attempt to shank On the swings And mm-hmm. Did anyone pick up on this Was the guy Lifting the kids up With the underwear mm-hmm. It looked like A grown up Version of the like bratty kid from the Bone Storm episode. Oh, Ooh. Gavin, yeah, Ooh. yeah, I maybe it, like his future was juvie. That's interesting because I thought it kind of looked like Jimbo a bit. Maybe right. he's like oh, a, yeah. a common brother of theirs or something. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I was on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, these youngins love TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Always dabbing and don't get to see what's happening around them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. One of the wacky moments I really didn't like and yeah, echoing your point, Beach, of like the episode not starting as strong was yeah, Bart doing white wedding montage with the barcode gun. Yeah, that really did nothing. Yeah. Because he scans a product and then it appears on the barcode and you're like, there are no jokes here. You're just scanning things. Yeah. And especially for this era of Teen Simpsons, like it feels like they're doing so much of this like sort of Matrix referencing bullet timey thing. Oh four. Okay, so yeah, Matrix references was still the hot thing. I felt like the plot line, though, of Bart being like, huh, here's a way to scam ha- hatch a scheme and like scam people. Like, I, that felt very... like mm. Genuine. Yeah, classic. Yeah, I, I think that as well, because like, I would have watched this when I was like, you know, at the time or whatever. I remember it being like pretty cool as a kid. So and I remember trying to get... How old were you in 04? I have no idea. I would have been... <laughs> d- Just an embryo. I can't do maths. I would have been 15. <laughs> yeah, and I'm... So you're what, like seven years younger than y- me? Yeah. Six? Yeah. So, <laughs> eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can bleep this out if you don't want your age revealed on the podcast or something. <laughs> Oh, it's fine. I want everyone to know how young I am. <laughs> young so I'm successful young. and young. Oh, my so God. So young, her she? skin's not even haunted yet. Oh, my God. She had a film in the Sydney Film Festival at 22. <laughs> what? Oh, my. You didn't tell me we were on with a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, thank you. I was on TV for five minutes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I remember it being like pretty sick seeing Bart do that. And I remember being uh, a young child and being like, man, where are those guns to register mm-hmm. things? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The way it played out, though, it didn't really do it for me. Like with the town immediately fighting over oxygen and stuff. Do you guys like that? Or I do like Mo, his line of, quit breathing my air. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, then the tent collapsing, and so <laughs> that implies everyone's dead. Mm. Yeah, that I, that felt unnecessary. It was just know. a bit weird. Like, I don't think, I think for Bart to end up in juvie, you could have had so many different yeah. things, and it just felt like they were like, oh, yeah, let's. this is a cool idea. Let's just have some gags for this. Well, I mean, like, him ending up in juvie is really just a consequence of the scam, right? So, like, Yeah, but I yeah. think that, that the whole episode is about, like, I reckon if they were thinking, they were like, oh, okay, well, let's have Bart in juvie. How do we get him there? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it feels so, like... But I feel like if, if they were going to do it with the scam, they don't need the weird oxygen yeah, thing. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. They were just no. like, oh, gag, quick. No, and it's such a weird uh, digital re- wedding registry is a thing now. Like, it felt like such a weird connection to me. And, you know, you mentioned the Bone Storm episode, which we, mm-hmm. yeah, coincidentally reviewed, like, just the other week. Mm-hmm. And it's like such, you know, a relatively small moment. You know, Bart gets caught stealing and Marge is devastated over it. This is yep. like, for Bart to go to juvie, it sort of feels a bit, I don't know. Underbaked. Yeah, it feels and they like don't a, feel as devastated by that. <laughs> no. It feels like a crazy like escalation. I don't know, mm. like to send him 
to Juvie because I feel like he's gotten away with worse things. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. He like defaced the like town's yeah. <laughs> statue and stuff yeah, like whereas that. Yeah, like, like, created a sonic boom that destroyed all the glass in town. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I feel as well like it would seem it there was like a bit of that like Bart has a heart of gold type thing mm. of like, you know, he means well, but mm. it just didn't feel it felt a bit forced of like, yeah, he's remorseful, but it's like, oh, but is he just remorseful because of the punishment or like, mm. yeah, you know, he, I, I, I didn't, I couldn't place his emotion really. He he didn't really redeem himself of the crime. Mm-mm. He just kind of was nice to the girl. And what do we think of her character anyway? Yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah. I like that kind of like, which they've sort of done before with old Mez. Yeah. I like, he would look up to the kind of like bratty tough girl, I think. Mm. Yeah. Like the I- bad girl. I remember thinking she was hot when I watched that episode. Because I think like someone who's actually a bit of a badass is good for him because he's like a bit of a mm. sort of like thinks he's a badass, but like but still he's gets... actually a pushover. Yeah, and he still gets yeah. bullied by like Jimbo and all that. Like, and he still plays with the crafty doll. Yeah. yeah, all he wants to be is a petty thug. We know that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought it was yeah an interesting dynamic as well, and yeah, it's definitely their interactions were some of my more favorite part of the episodes, leading me to the next question: the heart. Was this an emotional episode for everybody? <laughs> they eat tacos at the end, man. It's beautiful. <laughs> you care less about familial relationships and more about tacos. I know. I told <laughs> yeah. you that. <laughs> I feel like it tried to be an emotional episode, but it did kind of fall flat. It wasn't like, it wasn't trying too hard, but you could tell they were like, okay, well, how do we kind of yeah, I think the stuff, throw at heartstrings? The stuff with her was okay, but largely not overly Ooh. emotional. Yeah, yeah, I think like emotional yeah. enough to be an episode of a show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More emotional than your average Big Bang Theory or something. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Have you watched it recently? <laughs> Just kidding. No, because I don't like fun of making. Uh, I don't like making fun of autism. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because you know we're talking about Marge's devastation as well, and like, yeah, the bit with them swapping Ralph out, I thought that was like a emotional and funny button to close out the act on. But then, yeah, Marge just doesn't seem to give a shit after that, really. Yeah, mm, it's a bit yeah. inconsistent. Yeah, she got over it very quickly. And then also there was that weird scene where like. Homer was like being super abusive and like condescending to her and then it just like felt like oh yeah this is funny but also like Jesus mm. Christ yeah. he's like, uh, he's like in a way yeah. I too am a victim of you yeah, yeah. I, I just wrote Homer cunt and underlined it a few times yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's I was saying to be like the like the internet thing of like jerk ass Homer I was like oh yeah this feels like they've started to settle into that yeah 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 which again is like because they like almost do the other side of it with Homer becoming the guard, but then that doesn't really go anywhere, which is I a shame. Totally forgot that even happened. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember. I-, I was literally thinking earlier. I was like, "Oh, what happened? Was I like not paying attention?" And I'm like, "Nope, they actually just completely dropped that storyline." <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, to be fair, getting there was pretty funny. I do like um, the sign that says. Guards wanted. If you can read this, you're ever qualified. Is hmm, interesting. Yeah. Oh, what was that sign say? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that. Yeah, that's good. And mm. the training. This ends for hitting. This ends for holding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> training over. Do you know what I was thinking though? Like during this, is like that. That was a funny sign gag and had like a good joke off the back of it. But mm. like the sign gags were a bit more inconsistent, and I feel like that. Like that's like a sign of the show quality getting worse. Is like because all the sign gags are like so funny back in the like classic yeah. era. And it kind of, yeah, it gets a lot more inconsistent, I think, as it goes. Mm. There's still some good ones out there, but yeah, that's not not as great. Well, because I just like, I was scrolling through Facebook as you do in this era mm. of that's the only thing you can do with your day. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it was just like, a, these 50 gags you've never noticed yeah. in The Simpsons. And I was like, I bet I've noticed all of them. They're just yeah. sign gags. <laughs> but it was like, there were probably like 45 from like the good era and then five from later yeah (laughs) that speaks volumes well it's actually something we've noticed is the sign gags in the hd era like may as well be pulled from the classic era like Mm. that's the one part of the simpsons they can still do pretty well consistently and Mm. yeah it's a shame in this episode that yeah it opened with a very yeah lazy and dumb one i don't know why they pulled focus on it yeah yeah, it speaks a lot about the heart of the episode if we're talking about sign gags right now anyone else (laughs) have any other notes about the emotional moments in this episode tacos i i'm i'm glad that they went with the joke yeah at the same. end like if the prison guard joined i would have been like oh that's just like a bit too sappy like yeah yeah 
I don't know. I feel really bad for Gina, though, because, yeah, there's just no, like, positive for her story besides, yeah, one taco meal with the Simpsons at the end. Yeah, it's sometimes also, um like, you know, the commentary of, like, when they go to Korea Day or whatever and it's all, like, fast food joints mm. and stuff like that and then mm. I start thinking about the American prison system and how that's really <laughs> fucked and bad and how basically we're all just like yep. you know not doing anything to try and improve as a society and then I'm like oh I'm watching a Simpsons episode yep. never mind <laughs> um, yep. privatized prisons are fucked <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe the thing could have ended with she gets back to the cell and there's a letter from Bart and he's going to be her pen pal or something yeah, yeah. yeah. something yeah. more consistent than I mean as good as tacos are they do end so yeah, yeah. and more. like tacos i was like how are they in the cell what is this visitation rights like you know who signed <laughs> off on this did the mayor all, have to approve this how do all <laughs> questions can be answered with tacos yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. also the warden just shut the cell and left so <laughs> yeah. So, yeah so they're stuck left, in there for the night too he left yeah. for the night yeah <laughs> <laughs> but did this feel like a simpsons episode are the characters behaving like the characters we all know and love I think absolutely I think it did, so, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I don't think there's any character breaks here. I, again, it's mostly Bart for the entire way. Homer's a little jerk ass, but at this point that's Homer. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. I think it like it it's stuff like they still feel like the characters, but like as it progresses, a few people start to get like a bit caricature-y. Like mm. both oh, Ralph and Chief Wiggum in particular get like Super particularly dumb. stupid. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about how they like pointed that out with um Die press for your eyes. Yeah, that's good, Ralphie. Like Yeah. Mm. Mm. That was the one line that felt really, really weird. Yeah. Like that was the one line in the in the entire episode where I was like, uh, eh, could have cut that. Yeah. The progression mm. of Ralph has kind of really like mirrored the progression of my enjoyment of the show. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think yeah. that, yeah, a lot of fans yeah. call it the Ralphanization or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There's a word I, for it. I, Despite that they're probably all neckbeardy incels, <laughs> I, I agree. Yeah, they sure are. Um, that's not a neckbeard. <laughs> Isn't it? No, that's a beard. Yeah, it's a regular some, beard. There's some real ass beard neck. on there. Because, yeah, I don't have any facial hair on my neck. Or yeah, n- neck go. hair on my neck. It's like you don't even understand what a thing is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. But yes or no, would you watch this one again? Sure. Yeah, I'd, I'd happily watch this again. Yeah, I don't think I'd like put it on, but if it was on TV, I'd just leave it on. I yeah. think this is like one of the best qualifiers for a hangover episode. Like, yeah. 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 Just engaging enough for you to enjoy it. I think if I was going to put this on, it'd be like while I'm going to sleep and I'm not paying as much attention. Yeah, yeah. or like when you're watching through the season or something. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, episodes we'd say, yeah, might watch again. Uh, we like to think about what playlist we'd put this in. What are some other Simpsons episodes that you think might pair well with this one? Prison. Yeah, prison. Prison Mar- list. Marge goes yep. to jail. I yep. would yep. think of um, the episodes of Bart and his lovers. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know, all of his little girlfriends and mm. crushes and stuff like that. I feel like that would be Maybe fun. With Jessica and um, Laura Powers. Laura Powers, Is that yeah. the babysitter? Yeah. 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 Mm. That's what I was thinking. Bart's mm. like harebrained schemes, I think. Like it was stuff like you were saying before, like the sonic boom and like yeah. all that sort of stuff. Actually, combining those two playlists, Bart the Lover, where he's kind mm. of, uh, <laughs> yeah, romantic messaging Mrs. Krabappel while building Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Good episode. I rewatched that the other day. It's, that's, uh, I forgot how good that episode is. Can I have your Disney Plus password? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually the very first episode we reviewed for The Simpsons Index. Oh, oh really? Nice. Yeah, Bart the Lover. We started there. Really? Yeah. yeah. And then we started going uh, new episodes to old because starting out on the mm-hmm. old ones just got us really depressed at the end of the podcast. So, so. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> All right. B, what would you like to change about this episode? I don't know. Like, I feel like it's a pretty solid episode. I don't think there's much I want to change about it. Would you like me to step in? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon, like, I'd, I'd probably just take some stuff out. Like, yeah, like we were saying before, like the oxygen thing doesn't really need to be there. Like, he could just be caught doing that. I think, yeah, it, it's all stuff we've probably already said. Like, make the crime more severe if mm-hmm. it's going to be what finally yeah. sends him to juvie. And then, like, give Gina a – figure out a way to give her a better ending that shows that, like, she's going to be okay. Actually, that's an interesting thing about the juvie thing. Like, I wish there was kind of, like, 
if it was like his last strike or something. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Or like if there was more weight where it's like, hey, you fucked around for enough time and now's yeah. like the time that we're actually put, like you stepped over the line or something, mm. then it would kind of seem a bit more justified than just a random um, escalation. Because occasionally they do talk about stuff that happens in old episodes. Like the last time I was on here, we talked about how they like referenced Marge like painting Ringo Starr in the episode mm. where Homer becomes an artist. Like yeah. they could call back to like, you've done this and this and yep. this. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But they try almost to do that with the storage locker joke, but because it's so it jokey drags. and it's like, cause you know, but got a bit of petty crime and stuff going on. But you know, I think South Park did it well where they pointed out how much like worse Cartman is and like how relatively Bart's not that bad and then just like, ooh, he fills up three storage lockers with his crimes and not, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I feel like I, I remember the South Park episode you're talking about where he like yeah. he thinks he's dead or whatever and like lists all the terrible things that he's done. Mm-hmm. Oh that yeah. He's got that to redeem for. <laughs> <laughs> Like, this idea that the Simpsons try to build up that, yeah, Bart's the bad boy. Like, and you're right, they could dig into their past because they've got enough references of stuff that Bart's done rather than, yeah, this really hokey inflation. Um, Mm. Sorry, was that what you changed? Yeah. BT. All right, so whatever crime Bart does in the beginning, have Marge dob him in for it. Ooh. And then at the end, when he finds out Gina has no one, she's all like, you idiot. She dobbed you in because she loves you, and this is the way you take care of a child. And so he realizes that having a family that is tough on you is better than having no one like Gina has. Everyone drinks lemonade, and the end. <laughs> I <like> no tacos? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, tacos. Yes. I, I like that. I think that's really good. That makes sense. Yeah, that that's what the taco dinner was missing at the end. Some jugo de lemon. <laughs> I've been practicing Spanish on Duolingo in Isla. Like and subscribe. <laughs> uh, like her a subscribo. Um, <laughs> Languages right. are easy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, B, do you have any other notes? Oh, I liked how um, this episode felt so much faster paced than the last episode we did. Like, it Mm. just, like, Mm. it kind of got into it. It It's, like, instantly, okay, they're at the mall, a few gags. Okay, he's into this um, wedding scheme, and then there's consequences in the wedding, and then he's in juvie, blah, blah, blah. It just felt so much tighter than, you know, the season of the witch episode. What was it called? Rednecks and Broomsticks. Mm. (laughs) Yeah. No, it was so much more cohesive as well. Like, even though I don't like some of the sort of ways they got to their plot points, it's like it followed a through line and it was very serviceable. Yeah. Yeah, that was the thing. Like, there was kind of like one plot from beginning to end. And we were following Bart the entire time, Mm. which was really fun. Yeah. Uh, How about you, Rose? Any other notes? The only other thing I can remember was uh, just kind of like a bit of sort of out of character, like a bit of a like almost gay panic joke where like Willie's breathing the air. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Mo, and everyone's kind of like, oh, like, I don't Yeah, it felt a little gay panicky. I, don't I know. thought it yeah. was hot. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I thought it was hot, <laughs> but it was there for the wrong reasons. <laughs> yeah, you usually have to go to the depths of deviant art to see Willie and Mo making out. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You don't have to look that hard. <laughs> yeah, Not when you're the one submitting those. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, BT, any other notes? Man, I got a heap. Um, I do like Mr. Burns. Like, what's the average peasant gift? A milking cow? Yeah. <laughs> There's a line that implies Quimby is having sex with his niece. Yeah, yeah that's a bit, that yeah. was cool. That was. Mm, do you think that stems from anything like in the Kennedys or just uh, unnecessary? <laughs> I don't want to think about it too deeply. I don't, I, I really I don't want to see that deviant art thread. I really like the animation that they did after she said, I'm your niece. It's just like slowly wrinkles set into his face. And I thought that was so funny. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But I think they've done every other Quimby as a sexual deviant joke that they're like, all right, Mm. open up the incest barrel. But it's like, this is when he realizes, you know, maybe this is a turning point for him, you know? I've gone too far. Yeah. Yeah, To give him credit, he didn't know. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I do like Homer's line of children of the future unless we stop them now yeah. <laughs> I feel the same way uh, he's also got the good line of why don't you pick on someone bigger than you who has a gun <laughs> see that's a shame I really wish the Homer guard story this is yeah um Wait, uh, I forgot to do what I'd change. What would you change, Elliot J. O'Neill? Yeah, I wanted to see more of Homer the Guard. Maybe it's just because like I'm a big My Name is Earl fan and I really liked that season where Earl was in prison for like a quarter of it and yep. uh, his brother was the guard. 
But yeah, there's so much potential with Homer being a big dumb guard. But mm-hmm. having said that, you really did like the giving them the wowie popping. Yep. Uh, so do also like the bit where they're at the, you know, um, boy prison, girl prison dance. And it's like, you will dance and you will like it. You'll drink punch and you will enjoy it. You will lock eyes and it will be awkward. Yeah, mm. that's a good line. Uh, Bart has a line of, oh, do you want to do the Bart man? Like, mm. Mm, no, uncomfortable, don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Homer has a long alien fantasy about Bart getting married to a hillbilly alien that I could just do without entirely. Yeah, that was a very Family Guy moment of this episode. Yeah, mm. it was very strange. Bart took out Cootie Insurance from State Farms and they took his money. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I yeah. love the ins- yeah. idea of an insurance agent that would have, yeah, a 10-year-old boy on the phone. like... We can process that credit card, yeah. Just give me your information and done. Yeah, if uh, you've seen ads like on American television, that yeah. Oh yeah, that really That's hits awesome. hard. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, also, like the wackiness of the you know big burly blacksmith making this tiny little key. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I would, that that was another thing. It was like it, the way that was shot looks like a reference to something, but I couldn't remember what it might maybe was. Uh, the grandeur of blacksmiths in general, I believe. I mm. think, yeah. Mm. I actually liked a couple of the sort of more artier shots that this episode did. Like, when their escape, I thought that looked really good. The blacksmith mm. was mm. interesting. And, like, when they were just walking away, there was just, like, yeah, some really nice stuff with the backgrounds. It's, I don't know. Yeah, this episode was pretty. Yeah, mm. nice. I liked the attention to detail of just giving her blue eyelashes. Yeah. Mm. yeah it made it very distinct. Mm. Yeah. And my final note is when Jean is like, guys, I have something to tell you. And Louis is, look, my fly is down because it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> Damn budget cuts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, my final notes. Yeah, Homer getting the shoelaces caught on the escalator. That joke was just so telegraphed. And mm-hmm. having said that, I would have been upset if his pants didn't come off. That's yeah. True. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, that would feel like a tease, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I like that Snake has managed to get himself a slot on Conan. Yeah. Promoting yeah. his book. Mm. Probably with threats. With Heather Locklear and Third Eye Blind. Yeah. <laughs> Third Eye Blind, a bit of a, an interesting reference for 2004. Yeah, because, yeah. yeah, that's very well after Semi-Charmed Life has been the flash in the pan that it was, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. that would have been like 97 or 98 or something. Did anyone ever hear Third Eye Blind's album Blue? No, I was talking to somebody the other day who was saying that there was like another of their songs that they really liked, and I can't remember the name of it. Uh, Never Let You Go was the other big one. I'll never mm, let you go. That may have been it. But yeah, their album Blue is fucking fantastic, and it was like, it was their follow up to the album with Semi Charmed Life, and they tried to do some like more creative outside sort of shit. And of course it flopped, so they went back to trying to write radio hits. But yeah, I th- it's yeah it was one of my favorite albums as a teen, to be honest. All right. Yeah, I'd be interested to check that out. I have a friend who's really adamant that the new Radicals album that you only get what you give is on is like a perfect pop album. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From start to finish, that yeah. feels like. Is there a one hit wonderland about that? There's, yep. there's got to be. Yeah. yeah, it's a good episode of One Hit Wonderland by YouTuber Todd in the Shadows. Yeah, who covers. Uh, Free radicals, get what you give. Yeah. It's time to rank this thing. Uh, Rosie, your turn to go first. <laughs> Maybe a bronze. Big old bronze? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How about you, BT? I'm going to definite bronze. I had a good enough time with this one. Like I said, it starts off kind of eh, and if they tied the beginning and the end a little bit tighter, like, I don't know, I suggested, mm-hmm, <laughs> uh, then, you know, it could have made its way up to a silver. But there's some jokes I like in this one, and it's, you know, coherent and cohesive, and I enjoy- had a good time. I'd watch it again, so bronze. And after doing 500 reviews of The Simpsons, you know, this is the bare minimum of what we want. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> How about you, B? I agree with bronze. I think it just doesn't have that kind of sense of satisfaction enough to bring it up to a silver. I think it still kind of leaves me a bit empty inside. Don't know if that's particularly the episode or just my general (laughs) feeling, but uh, definitely Mm -hmm. giving it a bronze. We've often questioned, are we just dead inside? But uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> I'm going bronze as well. This is another one of those cases where I uh, may have gone participant had have I not watched the other thing before. Because this is, yeah, they're doing a lot right in this episode and the stuff that they do wrong, you know, I- I'm going to still give it a pass and, you know, uh, watch this as I'm writhing in pain because I drank too much. Um, 
But yeah, overall, this will be a unanimous bronze. God, we are just all in agreement today. Yeah. How about that? In sync. Uh, and it will be the second episode from season 15 that we've given a unanimous bronze. It'll be joining Smart and Smarter when they're trying to get Maggie into a selective preschool that oh, yeah. si- and Simon, Simon Cowell. Cowell is there for some reason. Oh, I've seen that episode. Yeah. 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 Not bad because, you know, any pairing with Maggie in the show is just so underdone. Mm. <laughs> so having mm. Lisa and Maggie at the focus was very interesting. But yeah, much like this one, some weird material. On to our next episode. Now, we're going to the classic era. Now, I gave Rosie and B. I gave you the choice of a good yeah, 10 or so episodes. What did you pick? We picked Homer Badman. <laughs> yeah, uh, BT, do you know what this episode is? I'll see you in hell, candy boys! <laughs> That's the one! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go watch that. We'll be back. Beautiful. And we are back and we just watched our classic and final episode for the evening. This was Season 6, Episode 9, Homer Badman. First released in uh, November of 1994, it was directed by Jeffrey Lynch, written by Greg Daniels. Um, Wow, what an ordinary name. Oh, you don't know this guy? (laughs) Greg Daniels. Oh, he was behind the American office, Parks and Rec, King of the Hill. and Yeah, Yeah, I was going to say, no wonder that this episode is so good, like... He also was like Conan O'Brien's writing partner. Did a big tenure on SNL as well. Yeah, he's uh, very prolific. Uh, Mm. Yeah, in this episode, Homer, Badman, Candy Convention, and Sexual Harassment Misunderstanding. Hey, y'all, what do we think? This is one of my favorite episodes of all time. It is a perfect episode. No flaws. Oh, wow. It is remarkably beautiful. Almost as beautiful as the gummy Venus to Milo. Mm. Yeah. (laughs) This is like maybe top five for me. Dang. Mm. (laughs) It's... Amazing, because this is absolutely one of these things where I criticize New Simpsons for doing wacky, off-the-wall shit like this episode does, but I don't know. The wacky moments are so amazingly well, executed in big, this episode. Yeah, the big difference is they're so tightly packed and so like swiftly delivered. It's, you know, even the stuff you could accuse of being filler and cut easily, it would still feel like there was a missing part, you know? Mm. Yeah. yeah. It, it, like, yeah, it feels like all the wacky bits have purpose. Yeah, it, it mm. has a... The whole episode has this insanely tight sort of cause and effect chain that just never ends. Like, everything is there for a reason. It's like the movie Scream. Every <laughs> scene <laughs> Did you watch Scream last night? and beautiful, <laughs> and it cannot be beat. <laughs> just like the movie yes. Scream. <laughs> <laughs> Scream with Nave Campbell. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And actually, continuing the trend of guest stars of the uh, things of B has seen recently, did you happen to watch any NYPD Blue at all in your no, recent weeks? No, I didn't. So I didn't pick up who the guest star was. I did, because I, <laughs> in preparation for this, I, I watched this uh, episode with the commentary last night. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, oh, really? Yeah, because I've got the, I think I've got about season four to eight on DVD. So I, yeah, I watched it with the commentary and they were saying it was Dennis Franz from yeah. uh, NYPD Blue because they said they had somebody else lined up, like a similarly kind of stout mm-hmm. Homer-esque person, but they said no. So then because NYPD Blue was like on the same lot, they just like went down and like pulled him in. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. No, it was really interesting. And, you know, Dennis Franz, yeah, famously of NYPD Blue. And then not much else after that. He sort of eased into retirement. But I thought he, he eased into death. All right, that's good. No, he's still alive. All but right. I'm glad to be wrong. His last big role after NYPD Blue was as Captain Cleghorn in the Mighty Ducks animated series. Oh, not sure. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I figure yeah. once you're Sipowitz for so many years, it's yeah. hard to not be seen as that. Yeah, I, sure. Sipowitz gets mentioned on another episode of The Simpsons. I can't remember which one it is, but where Homer's wearing a short sleeve shirt with a tie. Yeah. He's like, Sipowitz does it. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that'd be the Marge dress one, the Chanel suit, the scenes yeah, from the yeah. class struggle in Springfield. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, let's hook into the episode review. We'll start with you, B. For better or worse, what's a moment that stands out to you? Oh, man, it's so hard because, like, all of it is so good. Mm. I just remember, I, I just love um, Bart and Lisa hugging the TV and kissing <laughs> it. And then he's like, kids, are you hugging the TV? No. no. <laughs> so good. So relatable as a kid. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, how about you, Rose? For better or worse? What's your moment? Oh, there's 
Yeah, it's the same thing. There's so many. I'm just trying to think of like everything that we just laughed at in the episode. <laughs> what, what was the most? Like, I one, one line that I always think is really funny. Maybe uh, I'll go for an underrated one. Maybe is just uh, like Kent Brockman talking about the phone pole and saying, "Of course, this is uh, just a television pole <laughs> and it's not legally binding unless Proposition whatever passes, and we all pray it will." <laughs> yeah, I le- I went over to beach and I like threw my pen oh, yeah. down a notebook and just put my hands in the air and it's just like that was a fucking amazing news report by Ken Brockman. Just yeah. both yeah. R- writing and delivery of performance. Like now this technology is new to me, but. I think that's Homer Simpson in the other like <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or even before that when you've got um we'll bring you highlights later on, like such as when the garbage man came and when Marge put the cat out. Possibly because it was being sexually harassed. We don't know. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and also like just the classic like yes. which is one of the great like animated shots, but also just great lines of just he sleeps in an oxygen tent, which he believes gives him sexual powers. <laughs> See, I always think about that line, but I forget about the follow up. Yeah. Hey, that's a half truth. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I think as we mentioned on the last one that I was on, like Simpsons tattoos, like Homer lying on the floor covered in the curtain, like that. I think that would be. Great. <laughs> I'd, I'd consider that one. Get that for a back piece, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then if you're lying in that pose, no one will be able to see it. Oh, that's uh, true. You got to get it like right no. across the stomach. <laughs> I'd get yeah. it on Hell my sh- yeah. uh, shin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I know you said shin, but still, chin would be a great place for oh, it. Oh yeah, as well. on my chin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just a How real little beat? one there. That'd be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, BT, did I ask you what stands out for better or worse? No, you did not. And if I can get serious with the class for a moment. I do really enjoy the fact that this is a genuine misunderstanding. To my recollection, there were many episodes of television like this around this era, and usually the accuser would be vindictive or taking a clearly innocent problem and blowing it up into a sexual harassment and assault. I actually quite like when Homer originally does grab the Venus off her butt, it switches to her POV, which is this drooling man reaching for it. It's like, Mm. yeah, understandable. So the fact that it's a genuine misunderstanding really, I think, speaks well to this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Elliot, back to you. Yeah, so the, the, the actual incident. He should have asked. He should have mentioned it. Man, there, there is a gummy trap to your butt. When you're driven by the desire for gummy, all Don't logic know if is this gone. is a road you want to walk down, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say gummy as much as possible. So, <laughs> Will you two stop gummy. saying gummy, gummy so much? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, what what we think of how this played out, yeah. What did we... Start, <clears throat> start Sorry, again. What? <laughs> <laughs> what did we think? Sorry, what? The, the gummy and the grabbing and the the uh, how the actual thing played out, yeah. I thought it progressed so well. Like, I think Greg Daniels was saying in the commentary is like this was one of the, I think first ones they did of like a sort of set piece being the kickoff for like the story, and it was like the kind of the first whole act. Yeah. But like it all makes sense and like is paced really well and progresses quite yeah. well like everything is there for a reason yeah it's funny like what they would later call you know the first act fuck you yeah i still think melds it, into this story pretty well yeah yeah and also because you're doing such a rapid shot of all the kind of jokes in the in the candy convention like the wax lips the candy of a thousand uses <laughs> mm. and all these other things the gummy venus de milo just looks like another joke you don't realize it's going to become part of the story and i quite like bearing that lead yeah yeah and to you know your point as well you know showing ashley's pov as well and like the setup of homer being pretty gross anyways to yeah hold the wheel i need to scratch <laughs> myself in two places at once like yeah, yeah and also like even the beginning part of him like letting her sit for 20 minutes in the car and stuff like that <laughs> it's like the slow escalation that is like still filled with jokes but then you can yeah totally of course understand. she's gonna be ready to hate him yeah yeah hmm. we were saying this is like you couldn't I don't think you could do this episode now no, like it's... without getting like so much hate yeah because it's like like we were saying like yes you should believe women and everything like that but like it would be really hard to present this storyline of like an innocent mm. man in this like political yeah. landscape yeah yeah I, well, I think it like it makes the like kind of like ridiculousness of the mob mentality mm. seem like that would be harder to present now they'd be like well yeah like people would probably like and should be ready to be like that's bad. Yeah, it yeah. would feel very targeted at me too if you released it now. So it would not be the purpose. Yeah, even if that wasn't the yeah, intent. Yeah, rather than critiquing feel. like yeah. media, like those Today Tonight mm. sort of yeah. shows that try to like scandalize. Things. Well, that's that's what David Merkin was saying in the commentary. Was like this was originally meant to be. Um, I think like 
Greg Daniels wrote it as more of like Lisa's feminist ideals versus Homer, like maybe kind of like a Lisa the vegetarian kind of thing. But then like, because mm. Merkin was Merkin and took over everything, like he turned it into more of like a comment on the sensationalization of media. Mm. Mm. Very Merkin move. But like, I think mm. that's what helps this episode not age badly is because, yeah, it's not a criticism of... Oh, uh, yeah. Like, all the controlling stuff that Merkin does, like I think the show benefits from massively like my mm. favorite seasons are his two seasons in charge well i mean even like he fed a lot of the information that led to lisa the vegetarian and yeah, yeah. a fucking astounding episode yeah hmm. god and what stands out to me yeah can we just talk about that candy convention some more like <laughs> oh yes <laughs> yeah it's so fun like the art direction on this whole scene is just amazing and yeah you know we were paying extra special notice to the ambience and stuff and like there's crowd noises and mm. even when like marge goes away and tries to have some celery on her own which also <laughs> fantastic joke you better put some sugar on that man yeah the crowd noise dips out a bit and sounds like it's still there but it's coming from another room it's just yeah it's much more meticulous it just feels as well with the later seasons it feels like they might have just had more of a rushed kind of production as well because it's like yeah. less writing, less developing, less kind of like Atmos and Foley put into it and mm. everything. And it's just like, it just makes it feel so much thinner. Whereas like these yeah. like real classic ones, there's so much like texture and like depth in like story and kind of just ambience and whatever. Well, and I think at this stage, they still have something to prove. Like, oh, for sure. Yeah. The, a new season is a done deal at this stage, so, you know, why try harder? Mm. Reminds me of a fat boy slim shirt. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> that's a really fucking deep cut. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of left field, but all right. But, yeah, even in the Simpsons 6 season where they were, yeah, on top of the world and writing the best show, like, they still didn't know if they were getting renewed next year. Mm. They still had to fucking work, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I was going to say, while we're at the candy convention, just some of the stuff that I really liked, like visually, like one, Homer's face with the sour thing, I think is so funny. <laughs> Iconic. <laughs> Great sign gag on the way in with the like candy shaped rat poison convention in the room <laughs> next door. <laughs> yes. There was like a callback, I think, to another thing from like a last episode where there was a sign that says nuts and gum. From the thing Together where Homer's like, I'm a white male, aged 18 to 35. Everyone listens to oh. me, no matter how crazy my ideas, and it's nuts and gum <laughs> together at last. <laughs> <laughs> they're not only together at last, but now they're doing conventions. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Go nuts and it's, gum. It's just I, great to see such a little guy kind of really rise <laughs> through the ranks. <laughs> I do really want to point out the name of the Super Sour Ball was 77X42, which is obviously going to be Elon Musk's next kid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Take that, Elon Musk. And when he <laughs> fires out that tweet, my face will look very similar to Homer after he ate the fucking <laughs> Where'd you get that name from? Oh. <laughs> Weird sort of side note to point out in this scene, Frank has pupils. You never see that. <laughs> I don't oh, yeah. I didn't even notice. I wouldn't have even thought of that until you said that. Well, he's like the professor in Futurama where it's just, you know, massive glasses. But yeah, he's got pupils in this one. Weird. Oh, wow. So, yeah. I'm never going to not see that now. <laughs> <laughs> Play count. How many times have you seen this episode? Gummy. Oh, uh, yeah. Who knows? Like, so, so, so many. I don't know. Probably like s 10 times, maybe. God, I, I would be like at least five times that many, maybe more. Well, this was one that... You remember those old VHS compilations of Simpsons episodes? Do I ever? Mm. Yeah, I had one with, like, this and the X-Files episode and the Stonecutters episode that, yeah... I Fuck, I, I might have had that too, actually. <gasps> yeah, I think it was called, like, The Dark Side of Springfield or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah I had that, yeah. That's yeah, cool. and I wore mm. that VHS tape out and that really dates how old I am. Um, So was this a particularly <laughs> wacky episode of The Simpsons? I think this is real wacky. Super wacky. But, like... All in a good way. Yeah. Like the under the sea thing. It's like, <laughs> it's so great. Or or even like the Ben Bear talk show host yeah. is like so wacky. <laughs> yeah, I really want to find out why I don't hate these things in this episode. Like, especially the pop rocks and cola. Like, it implies Homer <laughs> killed a lot of people. Because it's like shot like a big action sequence. It feels like a parody and that mm. kind of mm. is wackiness for a purpose rather than wackiness for the waka waka. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's like this subtlety and like a deft touch to a lot of it. 
And I rem- uh, I don't know if this was from the commentaries or not, but I remember they were saying they tried to make this best uh, look like a Bruce Willis movie. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. like that it, it does look like Bruce Willis now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yikes. Yeah. They said that on the commentary. It's like a parody of every Bruce Willis movie. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Gentle Ben, mothers and daughters reunited by their hatred for Homer Simpson. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the timing of the... Uh, Ben Patrol as well. <laughs> no, Ben, yeah. no, yeah. smack. Oh. Yep. Just the assertion of like, of course this has gone wrong before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then even the even the panel after that, that's like, we'll be right back. Yeah, they've got, they've got a graphic ready. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, speaking as Ben's, on behalf of Ben's everywhere, that's how you deal with haters. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a decent Halloween costume as well. Just like get me in a bear costume y- with a... You as Ben and, you know, everyone else can be Ben Patrol, yeah. Oh, they can tase me. <laughs> but yeah, back to the under the sea thing. God, that it's just gorgeous looking as well. Like, I don't know how this old Simpsons animation looks significantly better than the new shit. Yeah. Because it's made with passion. Again, yeah. I think maybe it is that thing where it's like there isn't Russian production. They take it, just mm. feels like, yeah. Well, Rose was saying how the explosion drawn. scene must have taken like forever mm. and stuff to yeah. animate. And it's like, yeah, yeah like because it's like Jeff Lynch said that it's like twice the work. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's such a dynamic shot. Oh, absolutely. And there's so much going on in the under the sea thing, and like, <laughs> and again, it's like it should be a wacky thing that I hate that it's just a joke about Homer eating a lot of things, but it's done so well. But I think what what works so, so with he's it eating is... all your favorite characters from The Little Mermaid. Yeah. <laughs> I think what works with it though is that he's like the reason he's fantasizing is because there's a problem presented to him and mm. then he's like, this is how I search? Yeah, like, solve the that's problem. That's his solution, is yeah. to live under the sea. Because if it was it's just like... It's not gonna happen. Yeah, if it was just like him being like, oh, like, nothing happened, I wish I was under the sea. Yeah, or if it was it, a family guy thing, I'm like, hey, I uh, remember that time, Marge, where we were living under the sea? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Whereas, like, it actually makes sense in the narrative for him to, like, be having this fantasy so it's not annoying. It doesn't jerk you out of the moment. No. No, just aside, Rose, that was an amazing Peter Griffin. <laughs> was it really? <laughs> it's pretty solid. Yeah. I'd, I'd actually yeah. even describe it as being freaking sweet, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I don't think I've really tried that impression before. <laughs> well, it landed. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, uh, may I say, uh, giggity. <laughs> oh, God. Um, I thought this the was a wack- Simpsons podcast, guys. Yeah, I think you'll find I'm subtly making fun of the show. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Although, actually, in a few weeks, we've got uh, uh, our mutual friend, DJY. He's going to be coming on to discuss the Family Guy Simpsons crossover with us in a few oh, weeks. Oh, David's so, yeah. doing that one. Fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hello, David, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> so the other bit of wackiness, but not really wackiness, is, yeah, Ashley controlling Bart with the video cartridge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love what? the way that's animated of him walking into the wall. <laughs> Just And the sudden, like, surprise of, ow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, he <well>, was surprised. <laughs> mm. Yeah. My last bit of wackiness was Homer's homemade Prozac. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, more ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> I, I really like the idea of putting ice cream in your Prozac like what's going to make me happy <laughs> <laughs> I actually like I know Prozac is an antidepressant right mm. I actually yeah. don't know what form does it come in pill it's a pill it's like pill form right? uh, yeah Homer making homemade Prozac <laughs> yeah it, is he just stirring a big thing of ice cream <laughs> like I mean, it's, it's probably, probably about, like close to that Maybe probably some, bourbon like, in there too yeah, yeah. <laughs> a bit, it looks like it just because it's pink. It looks like maybe there's like fairy floss in there or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a good substitute for Prozac, as we all know. How about the heart of this episode? Did you feel the emotionals? It's more of an emotional uh, ride than a you know heart to thump. Mm. I think like you kind of feel a bit for Homer, you know, when he's like depressed and sad, watching all those clips um, mm-hmm. on TV and stuff. Like I don't think it specifically is supposed to make you be like, oh my God, this is what people go through when they're, you know, bastardized in the media or whatever. But like you still, I still think you kind of go with him on the emotional journey and like the stress, Yeah, you know? But I think yeah. it's less like, there are episodes where it's like really centered on the emotion. Like mm. the what we were talking about before with like Bart and the- Heart sti- of gold, yeah, stuff. Bart yeah. stealing the video game or whatever. Mm. But this one, I think you're, the response they're wanting from you is just like, how ridiculous is like the response to this? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Also, they produced and filmed Portrait of an Arse Grabber like that. That is <laughs> yeah. <funny>. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I always forget that that's the title of it. Yeah, it's <laughs> really great. Who <laughs> Fortress <laughs> sounds classy, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> but yeah, Homer uh, uh, lying in his bed with the pizza boxes, mm-hmm. watching fucking old Letterman. God damn, that's a mood right now. But yeah, um, yeah. me as hell. <laughs> I love the parody on Letterman there as well. Yeah, the number one reference. I'm running into the ground. Yeah. I was going to say, like, two episodes in a row of having stand-ups on here where there's stand-up in the episode. Because there's oh, yeah, the evening right. at the improv, uh, you get Mr. <laughs> E.T. <laughs> I pity that's the fool so who nice. doesn't oh, phone no. home. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then they're, like, gesturing for laughs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, that was the punchline. Give it up. Come on. I mean, yeah. as stand-up comedians, is that a move that works? <laughs> yeah. Just, come on, give it to me. <laughs> I, you, 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 that works before you've said anything. Thing. Like if you're yeah. the MC getting up there and like give it a bit more, that actually does kind of work a bit. But like it works in some rooms not, as well. Yeah, not, <laughs> but, but like you know, largely not while you're you know already bombing. <laughs> like, but, but, uh, go laugh more. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. sorry. I, I can tell you it does not work on podcasts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like if you just finished your joke, like, and then I'll play us some neutral milk hotel and then just went for one of those. And <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd love that. <laughs> that used to work on our podcast a little bit because my old housemate used to be in the kitchen. And if I just kind of looked over at her, she'd like acknowledge and laugh out loud. <laughs> <laughs> a, a studio audience of one. That's amazing. Yeah, it was great. Oh, where were we up to? Oh, yeah, the emotions and all that sort of stuff. The feels. The feels. <laughs> yeah, did anyone have any more notes on that? Mm. Not really. Not, I didn't think it overly. was meant to be an emotional episode. I think it's not. Like, yeah. it is nice that, like, Marge immediately believes him and, like, Lisa's mm. proud of him when, like, he does the the innocence report or whatever, like, thinks that he did yeah. a good job. Or- but, like, they're, <laughs> it is, like, I like those little things where it shows that, like, they actually largely are, like, a functional family. Like, it's really cute when they're, like, scurrying around Marge, getting the candy out, and, like, <laughs> Bart and Lisa are clearly having a good time together. Yeah. Like, that sort of stuff. <laughs> Trying to find the caramel deposit at the small of her back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I love in that moment that Maggie found a second use for wax lips. As a yeah, yeah. Like for her own lips. <laughs> and I think any kind of real heavy emotional moment does actually get backed up by a joke. Like there's that big bit where he says to Marge, okay, I need you to make it all better. And she's like, um, sorry, I, I've tried. And I can't, I, other than support you, there's nothing else I can really do. It's like, so I'm alone? No, I've never been alone before. And they collapse and go, help me, God. And then the phone rings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is God. <laughs> Free, Free Jones. Jones from the TV magazine show Rogue Bottom. <laughs> The physical. Physicali- I love that joke. Oh, it's so good because he like really ramps up the tension with his, mm. his freaking out and he dropping to his knee. Like there is an amazing physicality of that, and like mm. watching his reactions as the "Hello, Homer, this is God." Straightens up, Free Jones, and he just <laughs> okay, relax, slump yeah, again. Posture and <laughs> expression. One of Homer's many yellow. The <laughs> <laughs> yellow playlist. Yep. Yeah. But ultimately, did it feel like The Simpsons? So these are characters yes. we know and love. One hell yeah. Of course. Yeah, I think the important thing with this as well is Homer is very much not jerk ass. He's absolutely the golden retriever that. Yeah, that doesn't know why he's mm. in trouble. Yeah. Can't say tit mouse without giggling like a schoolgirl. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's also like the external characters feel like the external characters. Like Kent Brockman feels like Kent Brockman. Mm. Like Mo feels like Mo by like being a Willie. bit underhanded. <laughs> Absolutely yeah, selling out his friend. Yeah. Flaming Mo's. It's all, yeah. <laughs> He's got a track record. Yep. Actually, that uh, Willie's a bit of contention with this episode among Simpsons fans because some people have said it feels like a deus ex. Did you feel, think that or? No, I reckon Willie would. He's, you know. <laughs> He's, he's lonely. W- yeah, he's built as being like a weird loner eccentric type. Mm. Like, mm. I just also like the assertion that every single Scottish person <laughs> does that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, no, I mean, it is, but again, how else are we going to get out of this without having someone swoop in with some kind of new evidence? Like, he wouldn't get into the position he's in if there was already existing doubt. He needed something that would absolve that absolutely just to drop out of the sky. Yeah, which is often how problems are, like, actually solved like that. Yeah. Which is, I also thought that was, like, a remarkably prescient thing, like a line of dialogue from Mars where she's like, as long as everyone's filming, like, everyone, justice will be served. <laughs> and, like, and now we've all got a fucking video camera on us at all times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's it's one of those lines like, oh, is this where we're ending the episode on? And, yeah. like, mm. but yes or no, would you watch this episode again? Yes. Oh, yes. I, and I definitely will. <laughs> Even with commentaries. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I, wait, you got to do the the whole run through, 
And then the whole run through again with commentary is how I generally yep. do it. My lord. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good run. And then a cool down with it. the whole run through again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so episodes we want to watch again, we like to think about what playlist we put this in. What are some good Simpsons episodes that pair well with this one? Oh, I tried to think about this. I've got so many. There's like Best of Kent Brockman. Yep. Um, mm. The Springfield Mob. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like where they, sure. uh, with the Bobo episode where they break in and steal Bobo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or where they go down the old mill to get some cider. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much good Springfield Mob. Oh, I had so many of these and I've immediately forgotten them all. <laughs> About Quimby being a pervert. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Accidental Quimby pervert playlist. You also have an accidental cooties playlist. Oh, is that right? When Bart's all like, why would you touch a girl's butt? That's where cooties come from. Mm. Oh, and yeah. in the previous one, we had cootie insurance. That's right. Best of Groundskeeper Willie as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. And uh, eagle-eyed listeners. Wait. Eagle-eared listeners. <laughs> Wait, eagles have good ears. Good-eared listeners will note uh, Elliot J. O'Neill's reference to this being season six, episode nine. Oh, yeah. oh, nice. Nice. It was actually a very unintentional... Uh, oh, really? ...lining up where... Oh, really? <laughs> ...where B and Rosie said, yeah, we want to do Homer Badman. And then I'm like, doing the schedule. Okay, i got to do Chris this week, Ultra 64 mm. that week. And all right, we'll fit Rosie and B here. Oh, my God. Well, just yeah. 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 everything up in a neat little package. <laughs> yeah. What it does. <laughs> B, what would you like to change about this episode? I don't think I would change anything about this episode. Like, it's really hard. I, like, can't see a single flaw in it. Just leave it as is. Yeah. If it ain't broke. Yeah, if it ain't broke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'd just be me meddling in something that shouldn't be meddled with. How about you, BT? Uh, Gummy. Say gummy gummy just constantly. In fact, (laughs) every line of dialogue. (laughs) Gummy. No. um, It's great. Yeah, I'd lower, add some fans to lower rin- resistance, and this green stripe I think looks pretty sharp. Yeah, I don't have anything, but again, to your point, what you were uh, saying before is that yeah, you couldn't make this episode now, and I think if you were to make it now, you'd be running it through a whole different filter. And I think yeah. this episode actually has a lot in common with Homer's phobia, where it's surprisingly well done for something that was made in the nineties. Mm. You know, ninety four as well. Mm. Like- ninety four, yeah. And yeah, Homer's Phobia are only coming out two years later. It's yeah, it's surprising how well both these episodes have held up considering. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We are here, B. Do you have any other notes? I I just love when he falls on in the shower. <laughs> yeah. I think that's just one of the most iconic, like, just screen grabs. If I could get that printed up on my wall, I would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking A. Uh, how about you, Rose? Any other notes? Oh, I thought that was the thing, like, hey, you can sort of tell with the later episodes that it's changed because signature jokes of theirs aren't really there anymore. Like, you don't see much of this anymore where, like, things that aren't explosive explode. I love that playlist. (laughs) Yeah, like, just, like, pouring the milk in the cornflakes and things are on fire. I know that's not this this episode, but, like... Hans Molman's going to crash into the tree, stops short, but still the car explodes. (laughs) Yeah, so funny. So funny. But I, I thought this was funny. It was uh, I screenshotted uh, everything that came uh, in the, the list at the end of Rock yep. Bottom. Oh, awesome. So here, I reckon let's do it. Here we go. We got, uh, People's <laughs> Choice Award is America's Greatest Honor. Mm-hmm. Styrofoam is not made from kittens. <laughs> the UFO was a paper plate. The nerds on the internet are not geeks. <laughs> the Extremely word she- 90s joke. Yeah, <laughs> the word cheese is not funny in and of itself. <laughs> this one I appreciated. The older Flanders boy is Todd, not Rod. <laughs> well, Always a point of confusion for yeah. us, yeah. Yeah, Lyndon B. Johnson did not provide the voice of Yosemite Sam. <laughs> <laughs> this one was certainly apt and correct. Uh, if you are reading this, you have no life. <laughs> yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll skip to some of the better ones. I, li- I really liked this one. Salt water does not, quotes, chase the thirsties away. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is my favourite Licking an electrical out That will not turn you into a mighty Morphin Power Ranger But have I you tried the, Elliot? I think the next one is my favourite Which is uh, cats do not eventually turn into dogs <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, Godfrey Jones' wife is cheating on him <laughs> <laughs> The Beatles have not reunited to enter kickboxing sh- competitions Yeah 
BT, any other notes? I've got a bunch. Would you like to go first for a change? Maybe. I, don't, I can. I'm doing. I just, you know, I felt like okay. Fine. We'll have um, a couple while I'm finishing mine. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I do like this whole thing starts with Bart just pouring the cereal. He's like, ah, oh, damn FDA, making it sure it's not all marshmallows. Yeah. And throws the bits of cereal back in the box, and he's like, Bart, geez, these belong in the trash. <laughs> kind of starting the episode out with candy, so that it's a natural flow into the candy convention. That's yeah. so yeah. funny. Yes. Like, have you have you all tried Lucky Charms or? No. Because, like, the bits that he was throwing back into the track, they're still, like, sugar-coated. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 it's crazy that... But they're not well, marshmallow. One, one thing B said during that bit, was, the, which I agreed with, was, like, it happens now and then when, like, when Homer talks like that, yeah. I really enjoy it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, just the way he's like, you'd spit um, them out, you would. Like, he's suddenly also, very verbose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's also like a similar thing of like, he's like very gleeful. Like, you know, when he says, ooh, I'm like a candy wrapper caught in an updraft. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> right, like that kind of tone, to. it's so cute. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I like the little flashes of intelligence that he shows. Oh, absolutely. Like, like he's a surprisingly talented man as well. Hmm. Yeah. Can play piano and piano. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and let's, of course, not forget that is the rarest gummy of them all, the gummy Venus de Milo, carved by gummy artisans who are trained solely in the art of gummy. We you stop saying gummy so much? Never! <laughs> um, yeah, I did actually like Apu's line when he was going through the clump bars. It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I have no choice but to ask you nicely again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I do like candy for breakfast. I'm like, well, why don't we give it to needy children? They're like, ah. Yeah. I <laughs> so love cute. the kids replying in groans. Yeah. 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 Such great acting. Two, four, six, eight. Homer's crime was really great. Great meaning larger immense were used in the pejorative sense. Yes, that's <laughs> yeah. one of the ones I forgot. I fucking love that line. <laughs> it's great. Just grammar, like, follow up, you know, um, just making sure you understood where our perspective, but yeah. still doing it in a meaningful, memorable chant. Yeah, it's got to yeah. be a chant. And as Marge says, some of their uh, chants are quite catchy. She spoke to the indignation coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. I also like how uh, they follow through Homer throughout his day, just gently rocking him, whatever he's doing. And yeah. Like, and then Smithers walks in, hey, you people can't be in here. They're with me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why is he vouching for them? It's great. <laughs> and, uh, we ain't too much of a fan of nuclear power <laughs> either. <laughs> yeah. While we're at it. <laughs> when they just freeze him on rock bottom, it's like, Mr. Simpson, your silence only incriminates you more. No, yeah. Mr. Simpson, stop. Stop. No. Quickly yeah. followed by the great line read of dramatization made out of heaven. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and here's where uh, I must step us into Jordan's anal corner. Jordan's anal corner. We have a segment on this show because one of our regular guests, Jordan, is very anally retentive. So anytime we pull up these sort of moments, Mm -hmm. we uh, like to tribute our great friend. So Homer does the interview, which they pull all the clips from, which has the clock showing at five o'clock. And then when they're doing the cut up version, it's happening all over the place within a span of two hours. Yeah. I love that, though. (laughs) It just keeps changing. I love that rubber band reality. (laughs) <laughs> I love the way that they catch out the uh, sex farm for sex hookers guys as well by just being, mm-hmm. where do you keep the hookers? <laughs> Round back. Round back. Whoops. <laughs> whoops. <laughs> whoops. <laughs> in Thailand, it's like, whoops. <laughs> yeah. I do really like uh, when the home asks for a hug and they're like, uh, and then the hug is, why'd you hesitate? Uh, sorry, Dad. It's just hard not to believe TV. It spent so much more time raising us than you did. Yeah. <laughs> the flag only has 49 stars because Grandpa Simpson will be in his cold grave before he recognizes Missouri. Mm-hmm. That was the Take other that. one. That was the two <laughs> things I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that puts me out of notes Elliot how about you yeah only a couple of others I think we see an older sibling of squeaky voice teen who's got uh, mm. yeah I was access. thinking about that yeah because yeah. this is probably past the point where they've established what squeaky voice teen looks like yeah for... I'd say just yeah at least yeah but yeah he's like Raphael that Brooklyn sounding guy mm. who's uh, very amorphous hey, watch it. yeah oh that wise guy yeah yeah hey fatty he... I got a movie for you. <laughs> Decent Raphael as well. Yeah. <laughs> and again, on the audio quality in this episode, Homer's audio quality when he gets on the public access microphone completely changes to how the rest of the episode yep. sounds. The microphone quality is slightly more tinnier. There's mm-hmm. a little bit more like high mid sort of bad mixer sound to it. Like, yeah, I don't know if I'm just yeah looking too much into it, but no, no. I, I noticed. <laughs> it's you probably have to at this point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and as a wrestling fan, I appreciated the pun of Rowdy Roddy Peeper. I was waiting for Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Actually, yeah, I'm wearing a Dude Love shirt right now, so, yeah. Oh, you are too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's time to rank this thing. And B, your turn to go first. 
It got well. What is it? The, 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 the cubic zirconia. Cubic zirconia. Yeah. 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 I, I reckon that's. It's one of the most iconic Simpsons episodes ever. I just can't see how you could rank it any different. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't more strongly say cubic zirconia. Oh, wait your turn, Rose. Which is now? <laughs> what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, look, I'm going in cubic as well. I did flirt with gold for a little while because it, like, especially seeing so many episodes of The Simpsons that it's not quite as relentless as some of my absolute mm. favourites, but still there's so many iconic things going on here. The story is amazingly handled. I love a lot of the little character moments and, yeah, it's beautiful. BT? I am I'm teetering on the gold cubic border and I'm going to fall in a particular direction specifically because even though every line isn't laugh out loud hilarious, like in some cubic zirconias, it's a great example of a, not a single line is wasted. Even the stuff when you're watching Homer being lonely and depressed is still very poignant to the episode. It all ties together. Yeah, every single line serves either a plot purpose or a joke or a character purpose. So for that, I will definitely cubic Saconia. All right. And it'll Ooh. take me a little while to work out what the average is. So while I'm doing that, BT, you need to ask. The question. Yes, so B, as a first-time guest, we like to ask uh, the first-time panellists, if you could have a sandwich named after you, what would be on that sandwich? And if that's too difficult, because that is a very difficult question to spring on people, (laughs) the backup question is just, what's the best sandwich? I feel like I would just like the kind of sandwich that I would have, I would think it would be like bacon, Mm -hmm. egg, because I love that. Classic. A bit rogue, um, pineapple. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. And like a nice kind of relishy type thing with like mm-hmm. a little bit of spice in it. Um, and then maybe like some, uh, or uh, maybe like some, that? yeah, like, <laughs> so, no, like some baby spinach leaves, I think. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then you have it like slightly toasted. Mm. All right. Yeah. You're, you're like visiting every town in flavor country there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it's it. a big I'm country. A yeah. Hey, it's a, it's a sandwich that represents me, you know? <laughs> That's what you got to do, represent. This is like a good old day sandwich yeah. as well. I, yeah. yeah. For breakfast or lunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful entry to the sandwich index, uh, which yeah. is our secret sandwich board that you can find on our website, thesimpsonsindex.com. Like and subscribe. Ooh. All right. Ooh. Well, averaging out, this will be a unanimous cubic zirconia. We are giving this episode the Simpsons Index uh, Award for Outstanding Achievement in the Field of Excellence. Ah. Beautiful. And out of the 18 or so episodes from season six we've reviewed Ooh. so far, 13 now have wow. been called unanimous cubic zirconias. Uh, Ooh, shout baby. out if you've got anything to say uh, about any of them. Treehouse of Horror 5 with the shinning and time toaster and whatever. Gummy. Maybe my favourite episode of The Simpsons. The shinning wow. rules. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's just balls to the wall. So funny. Oh, yeah. God. I, I, Yeah, I could go to town on that episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's definitely my favourite Treehouse. Lisa on Ice, Grandpa vs. Sexual Inadequacy, Homer the Great, the Stonecutters episode, and Maggie mm. Makes Three, Bart's Comet, Lisa's Wedding, Two Dozen One Greyhounds, the PTA Disbands. <sighs> PTA Disbands as well. Huge yeah, love we were for that episode. Yeah, talking about that before. And Springfield Connection, Lemon A Try, and Who Shot Mr. Burns Part 1. All of them easily gummy Venus to Milo ranking or better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fuck Season 6 is really good. <laughs> it's arguably the gummy Venus to Milo of The Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, I think it comes pretty close to Season 5 for me, but I probably would say 5 pips it, but they're mm. hot in uh, a competition. Well, yeah, with our anchor- uh, uh, rankings averaged out over all the seasons... It's a very close race between, in order, 5, 7, and 6. Mm. And, and 6 would be on top, but the average got marked down significantly because of the fucking clip show in this season. Oh. All right. But, yeah. Boring. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right. Well, yeah, that brings us to the end of the Simpsons Index. Hey, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Oh, thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. us. Thanks for giving me something to fucking do <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, you're still doing stuff. You're still releasing podcasts, both of you. And, uh, Rose, what's your podcast? 
My podcast is called We'll Just Tell Your Mother We Ate It All, a podcast about teen sex, comedies, and things thereabouts that I do with my friends Jamie Kirk and Andrew Hastings. The last episode that we recorded before all of this uh, shit kicked off was actually an episode that B was on. So. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We did 21 Jump Street. Yeah. And uh, then we did a couple of best of episodes to fill the time. And then we uh, canned a remote episode because it was uh, really poorly recorded. And uh, <laughs> now we can be in the same room again. So we're back to. <laughs> business as usual hooray and be your podcast yeah so i have a podcast with a comedian and friend lauren bonner it's called were you hot in high school and basically we ask the only question that matters which is were you hot in high school it's um <laughs> a like funny podcast about cringeworthy memories and also like self-confidence and self-love and whatever crappy shit we love to dig out from our guests it's very good and i've been on it too. yeah rose has been on it so no your episode is fantastic and yeah a little while ago i was listening to the one with alexi toliopoulos yeah oh, very good Some really so great funny. guests on here yeah and bt your podcast you mean our other podcast our other podcast, our other podcast is <laughs> thrones of game the game of thrones podcast that watches the series backwards uh i've already seen the entire series but elliot had not seen a single episode until we started watching in reverse order gives us a unique perspective and we are the only game of thrones podcast left in town now that the series is over and everyone else has given up like a bunch of horses <laughs> <laughs> yeah fuck you ben Fennell and adam knox yeah didn't <laughs> <enough. laughs> who are they <laughs> <laughs> and that's it for me, your host, Elliot Chair O'Neill. And that's all the mustard in the house. Tit mouse. <laughs> <laughs> all the mustard in the tit mouse. <laughs> My God. All the tit mouse in the house. Thank you for listening to the Simpsons Index podcast, which is also an online spreadsheet available at thesimpsonsindex.com. You can chat to us online at facebook.com slash thesimpsonsindex or at simpsonsindex on Twitter and Instagram. And now please stay tuned for the bonus scenes. No, I don't have any Simpsons tattoos, but for ages I did want Bart doing a kip clip, but I don't know if that was just me being 17 <laughs> to mm. 22. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, we are now recording. Oh. Yep, so now uh, we do this little counting game for syncing up the audio. I'll say one, you guys say two, I'll say three, you four, five, six. Yeah? Cool. cool. Okay, one, two, two three, four, four, five, six. six. Great at this game. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> what do I win? You get to watch more episodes of The Simpsons. Pow. Yay! Hooray! <laughs> so, yeah, ready to uh, hook into this and talk Simpsons and all yeah, that hey. shit? Let's Lego. do it. Fuck yes. <laughs> all right, just, uh, get, get your vocal exercises on. Me, 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 me. La, 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 la. Mm -hmm. Me, me, mum, who? Me, me, me. <laughs> Halle Berry's hairy belly. Halle Berry's hairy belly. Ah. <laughs> yeah, it is tough. <laughs> Halle Berry, very sexy. Halle Berry, very sexy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can we throw the Harry Be Halle Berry's very sexy hairy belly? Ooh, that is good. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then throw in Harry Kiri. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Halle Berry's hairy belly <laughs> committed Harry Kiri. Ah. We'll figure it out later. <laughs> All right, but broken BT. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>